minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, wait, let me. Yeah, we live. We live. Uh, but yeah, take take, take your time. I, I will. Um, I will uh, give big ups to the family, and when you're ready, then jump okay. on. Okay. Uh, are we broadcasting uh, live? Yeah, we 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 we're, we're live now. We're live now. We live. We lit. Big All up. right. I'll be with you guys. Big up. In... Big up. Big up, uh, bro, Callum from Titans TV for that for that little for that little intro. We live, baby. Big up, Callum. I big up the whole family who tuned back on the live show. Thank you, thank you for um for being with us on the previous debate with uh, our friend Yakia. God bless him, Yakia. So yeah, we're back, looking fresh again. Got a new T-shirt, ready to do the final part for of Paperboy's massive presentation on. Deconstructing Mohammed, peace be upon him, and the Quran. I hope everybody's well. Uh, big up Revelation, Mikey, Jesus was an atom to <laughs> big up everybody on on, uh, on the live chat. IQ, Gregorian, um, P.S. Taylor, what's up, anybody? Snow Leopard, what's up, bro? Daniel Jennings, God bless you. IQ, bro, blessings to the whole family tuning in. Uh, sis Marion, yeah, hello, sis. Good to see you. Good to see you again. Ultimate Truth, <laughs> Ultimate Truth, is also in the house, and also Okami Primo. What's happening, buddy? I hope the family is well. I hope the sound is coming, coming clear. And um, we just sat, buddy. Yeah, all good. Happy to see the family. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting to do a, a like two live live shows or live streams uh, on the same day, but <clears throat> um, yeah, it, it is what it is. So happy to see you guys back back on on the channel. Cool. So we're gonna wait for Paperboy um, to come back on, and so yeah, he's going to finalize the presentation on on the on the topic at hand. And um, yeah, obviously, I, I hope the the family. Has obviously found these last two, last three presentations actually edifying, informative, and hopefully it will have encouraged you to go and research uh, the points that were made, so that you can make your your mind up about this particular subject. Also, uh, our friend Mohammed had the courtesy to jump on live, uh, jump on the live show yesterday, which um, we're obviously very happy because we've been asking the Dawa channels to jump on. Uh, especially the likes of Ijaz and, and Hamza and, and all those guys. And unfortunately, obviously, they, uh, due to the heavy schedule, they weren't able to, to join us. So, God willing, someone from their team will jump on board and to refute the points that are going to be presented in this final um, final part for of this presentation. Cool. Paperboy, where are you, bro? I'm here all alone by myself with a family. Where's Paperboy? What's going on with Paperboy? Mariana, good morning. Good morning, sis. Thank you. Illy Cards, thank you. Cool, Paperboy. Uh, hurry up because we wanna we wanna be on time. Um, yeah. So today we um, I was supposed to go to Speaker's Corner. Um, I think uh, some of the uh, I think Sis K went to the to the corner. Um, it's not back as normal, obviously. There's still some restrictions as to, um, yeah, uh, obviously the gathering, social gathering and stuff. So obviously there's, there are police there to, to make sure that social distancing is being put into place, uh, which means that there weren't many debates happening um, yet. Uh, so as soon as the lockdown uh, and this Chinese virus is being properly controlled, uh, we'll go back to the corner and we'll obviously bring you those debates to the family excellent so who's there super clown so can you please can debaters bring sources when they make claims otherwise it's just talking people talking exactly yeah i do agree with that super clown and um that's that's, what, that's why we like to encourage uh our debaters to whenever possible you know to bring evidence to the claims you know for for um yeah, so that you guys can go back and research. I don't know if you're referring. I don't know if you're making this comment because of the previous um, debate that we had with Yaki and, and our Lebanese, our Lebanese brother. Um, 
because I think that they did provide the evidence. Um, I don't know if you uh, maybe I should put those evidence on the on the screen so you guys can see it. But it, because of the nature of this live chat, sometimes it's um, it's difficult to get everything right. Plus, I'm also you know pretty new to um, you know to these formats, doing live chats and, and all of that. You know, um, I'm I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm still I'm still uh, learning. Cool. So yeah, I, I see also uh, Miss Piggy. Hello, Miss Piggy. Welcome, sister. Welcome, sister Miss Piggy. Albert Graham. <laughs> yeah, Chinese virus. Um, allow COVID-19. It's Chinese virus for me. Uh, cool. So uh, who else? Oh yeah, uh, Takia Watch. Also in the house. We're just waiting for Paperboy to to come online. Uh, yeah, so okay, cool. I got I got your message, my boy. He's gonna he's gonna be back soon. He just um he just wants to make sure that the mic is working on his side. I do apologize for the um yeah for the delay. Uh but I do hope that the family are doing well. Yeah, uh Habiba. Hello, Habiba, Habiba Jay. Hope the family is doing well. Um I hope that you and your families are, are all safe from this from this virus that is happening at the moment. <coughs> um <clears throat> Yeah, Island Realtors. Realtors, Island. Big up, bro. Hello. Welcome to the show, bro. Welcome to the show. AST123 as well. Welcome to the show. To the show. Samuel Johnny. Big up, bro. Big up the soldiers. Um, joining joining now. So cool. Paperboy. Are we ready to rock and roll or are we ready to rock and roll? What's going on, Paperboy? Because I'm still here. All alone by myself. Not really. I'm be with the, I'm be, I'm be with the family. There's no there's no uh there's no loneliness here. Let me just send a quick uh quick message to Paperboy and uh, so we can get get moving as soon as possible. Um and then we can we can finalize this. Um who else is in the house? Gedala, hello sis. Hello sis, welcome, welcome to the show. I don't see many many Muslims on the live chat. Uh, hopefully we can see, um, well, ideally I would like Muslims to come and actually jump on, jump on the live chat. So before I forget, I'm going to uh, send the link. This is the link. Uh, the link to join the, yeah, to join the debate. To join, cool. So also family, if you have um, to the Christians, the Christian family out there. Um, as I said uh, previously, you know, if you guys wanna jump on, jump on the live chat, you know, if you wanna wanna share anything with the family, um, if you want to promote your channels, your ministries, um, yeah, give shout outs or or whatnot, please, please uh, jump on, jump on the live chat and click on the link which I've just sent. Yes, yes, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, GM fifty seven. Happy to, see, happy to be with the family. Also, I can see DBS fits as well. Big up, K. Uh, no, this K. This is an, another K. Uh, cool. Hey, bye-bye. Welcome, bro. Good to see you again. Hey, Good to see uh, you again. Good to see you again, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, sound, the sound is coming clear. I hope the sound is coming clear for the family. So, Paperboy. Um, yeah, obviously, I'll give us... Give us um, I would like to suggest... Uh, if you can maybe give us a little recap of what we've been looking the last three episodes or maybe the last episode, and um, yeah, and so we can move on to the, uh, the slides. Yeah, so we've basically the presentation started off as being a discussion on the prophethood of Muhammad and the claims in the Quran. Um, so we opened uh panels for several different questions so we looked at various characteristics of what makes someone a deceiver that was uh determined by a psychological test determined by a psychologist so they could they say you can apply it to any situation so we thought we could apply it to muhammad so we looked at different things such as the historical claim within the quran um how accurate that were they with history some of muhammad's behavior um we looked at things from him getting revelations um 
to the night journey, forgetting verses, and basically it's a comparison of was this the kind of behavior we expected from previous is this the behavior we saw with previous prophets? If not, why was Muhammad's behavior so different? Um, and then we basically want, wanted people to make an assessment of the totality of the information we presented. You know, we see some of the Dawa channels, they have their live streams and they invite Christians on. And Christians are always representing um, but we see none of them kind of jumped on board this occasion. Um, you know, and I think it should say more about the religion, um, you know, that the people, what we find is that a lot of the Muslims are willing to cross-examine and attack the Bible, but when it's a case of putting up a defence for Islam, uh, they go missing. We also had... Um, Mohammed, who came on, and I think uh, he got caught up a lot in what he had to say. Uh, we used to call him the honest, honest Muslim. Uh, honest Muslim. Uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the mask sort of slipped a bit yesterday because I feel what we had with sometimes Muslims is that when that they don't like, for example, in the hadith, they throw it under the bus. So, for example, um, we brought up a hadith where um, Muhammad was reading for a piece of paper to read, for example. Uh, then we he got into a discussion with Rob about the um, meaning of Muhammad being unlettered. So we looked in the, uh, the Quran where it apparently refers to people who are spiritually dead uh, rather than illiterate uh, we, because you can go on Quran next and you can actually look at the tafsirs that they have on this verse and a majority of them say that it refers to uh, the word I think to me refers to people who kind of cannot interpret scripture so they're reading it um but not understanding the meaning um because i think with muhammad his instant reject reaction was this goes against the quran so we must reject it so he even knew this hadith was very problematic um so even i can put this link up for you jc if you just go in the chat um yeah I'm not sure if it even just to zoom in. Cool, that's fine. Uh, just I wanted to make a comment on on what you just said. Uh, so, family, after this presentation, um, I'm going to upload. I don't know whether to premiere it or just upload it, but it will be the twenty a, a segment where our friend Mohammed debated Rob Christian, so you guys can can see and understand where uh, was what uh, people was trying was trying to say or what, what he was saying um so yeah so um make sure you stay tuned for that one and i'm going to cool so i'm going to, okay so what i'm i'm looking at the hadith bukhari and muslim fatwa number a3766 yeah you, you, you want me to share that screen yeah yeah okay cool so let me Okay, here it is. All right, cool. So, what's this, paper boy? But to zoom in a bit more for people to read. Uh, zoom a bit more. Uh... Well, if not, I will just read it. So, basically, this is uh, this is not a Christian website. We can see the link: Islam Web Fatwa Number Eighty Three Seven Six Six. So the they sent in a question saying, should every Muslim believe in the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim? Are there any weak or fabricated hadith in the two sahihs? There is igma about the two, about the two, two sahih and Bukhari and Muslim. So the person basically wants to know uh, the status of these two canonical books. 
So their response is, as for the prophetic sunnah, which explains the Quran, Allah has made numerous great scholars to safeguard it. Those servants spare no effort to protect and record the sunnah of the prophet. For example, Imam al-Bukhari, Muhammad ibn Ismail, who according to Hatim ibn Mansur, as recorded in the book of al sayyir was a sign of divine creation in his insight in knowledge. Uh, and they said Muhammad ibn Ismail is as much superior to other scholars as men superior to women. He is one of Allah's miracles walking on earth. Ibn Azum Zayma said, I've never seen on earth more learned in the prophetic hadith, nor better in memorizing it than Muhammad ibn Ishmael Bukhari. They then go on to say, in addition, Imam Muslim is just is as just and reliable as Imam Bukhari. Both had the highest degree of memorization, proficiency, and truthfulness with Allah. Also, the book of Sahih Muslim occupies the second place. After Al-Bukhari, both books were received with full acceptance by the Muslim Umar due to meeting all the conditions of the highest degree for a sound hadith. Only a straying innovator would contest anything in either book. And then they go on to say the aim of such an innovator is no more than destroying Sharia through the, his unreasonable doubts they will fail because both the Salaf and al Khalaf, which is the predecessors and descendants, attest to the truthfulness of them. So when we brought this hadith to Muhammad, he did what most Muslims do in the park when they don't like something from Bukhari. They say, this must be Daif, you know. It goes from, you know, uh, Sahih to we don't accept it. But clearly, we've seen here fatwa. You can search many other Islamic sites. They will give you the same gist. They will say, you know, if you doubt a Sahih Hadith, then you become a disbeliever because these are the most authentic books. So we see with people like Shabir Ali, you know, they know there's a lot of funny things in the Hadith. So then they just start picking and choosing. And we see the same with scholars as well. Um, so Abbas, Abbas uh, as well, uh, baby boy. Let's not forget Abbas. Well, yeah, we, we see, you know, even when we bring Ibn Abbas, who was the best scholar of his time, he was the person that the companions went to to explain things. But then Muslims go to later scholars who apparently are better scholars than the person who was the cousin of Muhammad, who Muhammad prayed to Allah to give him the um, the best understanding of the Quran. I've forgotten his title, but he was basically called the scholar of uh, you know of the of the Ummah. He was highly renowned. So people would just say, well, he can make mistakes and so forth. But this just shows you the reinterpretation of the reinterpretation of the reinterpretation picking and choosing scholars and we may see have an example today depending on which muslims um if any comes on yep. so clearly cool. we see when it's bukhari or muslim muslims should accept this as truth so that hadith was very problematic we also saw the hadith where umar was given revelation and it somehow ended up in the quran we saw Abdullah ibn Sa'ah, who apostatized because he believed Muhammad was copying things that he said. So he said, either I'm getting revelation and I'm a prophet just like Muhammad, or if I'm a liar, then Muhammad is, an liar, is a liar as well. So mm. on that, we will then continue with our next, uh, well, then love, hopefully the final part. So we will also bring people on um so what we'll do yeah. we'll just kind of the discussion to the presentation and the questions asked and then afterwards if people want to kind of bring up past points that we brought in from previous um presentations that the past few nights then we'll kind of have an open panel on that as well where um the, we can continue until people get tired yeah um <laughs> okay cool i mean i, I want to um, I don't know. I'm looking to maybe do this live stream for the next hour and 30 minutes, um, if it's possible. 
And just to sort of like uh, once again remind the family is that um, this uh, ex um, exchange between Paperboy, Mohammed, and Rob Christian will be uploaded after this live stream. Um, uh, so you guys can see when Mohammed, our Christian caller, uh, pretty much rejected a Saki, Saki narrated uh, hadith. Uh, cool. So let's go straight to the uh slide right so i think it's slide number 75 if i'm not mistaken or 76 oh 76 okay cool so let's go to 76 uh which is okay so we're going to okay, number number eight in terms of trace of a deceiver yeah so this is the final uh statement i believe um so they basically said the sign of a deceiver is someone who makes few complaints or negative comments which may initially seem counterintuitive but it makes more sense that someone trying to create a good impression would want to be positive so people in people high in the desire to impress others will generally try to cover up their own negative reaction reactions so you will like them and believe them so if we go to the next state next slide here <laughs> we a hadith where it says uh, this is from sunan and nisai which is a sahih um hadith and it says the prophet used to raise his voice when reciting the quran and when the idolaters heard his voice they would insult the quran and the one who had brought it so the prophet began to lower his voice such that his companions would not hear him. Then Allah the mighty sublime revealed and offer your salah neither aloud nor in a low voice, but a follow away between. Now, it seems when we see, for example, Christ, when he went to the Pharisees, he called them hypocrites. He had no problem in confronting them. So what you have to ask yourself, shouldn't Allah have made an example of these idolaters who were insulting the Quran? We see previously people, for example, the Jews in the Quran were turned to monkeys uh, because they disobeyed the Sabbath. So does this seem like someone who's trying to appease a crowd? Why was he low in his voice in the first place? And then he got a revelation to make it in the middle tone. Allah should have given a revelation to make him shout and then make an example of these people because this, this is the kind of behavior we see in the Bible where prophets would go against people uh, and they would generally not listen to the, the will of uh, disbelievers. So according to the psychological test, this is a trait of someone who is trying to appease. So if we go to the next slide, Here we have another incident, and this is from Sunan al-Nasai again. This is a Sahih Hadith, and it says, it was narrated from Abdullah, a woman from Jahana, that a Jew came to the Prophet and said, you are setting up rivals to Allah and associating others with him. You say whatever Allah wills and you will, and you say by the Kaaba. So the prophet commanded them if they were wanted to swear an oath to say by the Lord of the Kaaba and to say whatever Allah wills, then you then what you will. So now this is problematic because this is maybe she's had a revelation too, because the Quran says anything Muhammad says is from inspiration. So how come he was allowing shirt? Because if you read the Arabic, I don't know if uh, Rob's around, he's called the Mushrikeen. So he is associating the partners with Allah by saying whatever wills and you will. And it was a Jew woman that had to correct him. So if this is the beloved prophet that is infallible, why would he make such a blunder that he had to get corrected? And then he told the people, now say whatever Allah wills, then what you will. Or say by the Lord of the Kaaba. Now we have to ask ourselves, is this something that we see with previous prophets? 
that they had to get corrected. You know, so clearly, again, according to our criteria, this is what we would say as very, very suspicious behavior. So, very, very suspicious indeed. So, um, I do hope that the Mohammed is, is watching the, the show. And uh, if you like to jump on, jump on the live chat, Mohammed, you know, this is the, uh, I'm going to share the link once again. Um, and I will, yeah, should we go to the next slide, big boy? Yeah. So, so do we have any Muslims that are wanting to come on? Not yet, so not yet, not yet. Here we have another hadith relating to the Quran, uh, Quranic verse, and this one is Bukhari, the most authentic canonical book in Islamic literature. So here it says, when Allah's messenger married Zainab bint Jash, he invited the people to a mill. They took the mill and remained sitting and talking. Then the prophet showed them as if he is ready to get up. Yet they did not get up. When he noticed that there was no response to his movement, he got up and the others too got up, except three persons who kept on sitting. The prophet came back in order to enter his house, but he went away again. Then they left. Whereupon I set out and went to the prophet to tell him that they had departed. So he came and entered his house. I wanted to enter along with him, but he put a screen between me and him. Then Allah revealed, oh, you who believe, do not enter the houses of a prophet. So here we see another strange verse, because if we go to the next slide. All right. You see, this is the verse that was revealed in the Quran. So it says, Oh, you have believed, do not enter the houses of the Prophet except when you are permitted for a meal without awaiting its readiness. But when you're invited, then enter. And when you have eaten, disperse without seeking to remain for conversation. Indeed, that behavior was pr troubling to the Prophet, and he is shy of dismissing you. But Allah is not shy of the truth. So, if we go to the next slide, we have to ask ourselves, how come now Allah is getting involved in domestic affairs? Is not the purpose of a prophet to reveal God's future plans? So therefore, if the Quran is Allah's eternal word, Allah declared from before creation that those people should leave Muhammad's house because he was shy. Now, would we expect this type of revelation from God or a self-serving man? What do you think about that, uh, Jay-Z? Well, that's, I mean, that's something that, I mean, when I look at this, uh, I often remember when this, uh, obviously within the Islamic traditions, it would appear that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wasn't shy to tell his followers about his sexual, sexual um, practices with his wives. Um, because he would, uh, because he would say that uh, the companions would say that the prophet had the strength of many men, that he would go around and sleep with with all of his wives at the same time. So that that's a bit contradictory because if he doesn't, if if he's if he's not shy to tell his followers about about you know the fact that he 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 he, he can have sex with his wife as many times as he likes on the same night, but then suddenly he's shy to to tell to tell his guests that you know that. Uh, to, to leave to leave the house so i mean to me that's contradictory um i think obviously i mean it's, it's self-serving uh by, by the looks of it so unless the muslims uh, can rebut this point and you know if you, if you can tell us why this is not self-serving why this is not a convenient revelation by all means jump on board and please uh, explain to us where where how we are mis misinterpreting this these islamic traditions um, well, that's it, you know, it, these, these self-serving revelations, you know, why does God care whether these people leave his house or not? The prophet is see, trying to appease people, you know, because I've never seen a, when we read the Bible that God gets involved in domestic affairs. But he seems to have no issue with, uh, you know, getting people to leave Muhammad's house because Allah is not shy of telling the truth. So um, do we have any, even Christians that want to jump on before we go to the next section? 
Um, yeah, um, let me once again remind um, the family that you can jump on, you can share your thoughts on this discussion with the family. And also, if you like to promote your channels, your ministries, by all means, click on the link, uh, which I've just shared right now. But so far, Paperboy, it's just the family. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll continue. Yeah. Just continue. Cool. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go to the next slide then. Hey, bye bye. So, the privileged prophets. So, now again, we see another example of a con man uh, is that Muhammad could sleep with any believing woman of his liking, a ruling only for him. So, we see in Al Azab, it says, Oh, Prophet, indeed, we have made lawful to you your wife's to whom you have given their due compensation and those your right hand possesses from what Allah has returned to you of captives and the daughters of your paternal uncles and the daughters of your maternal uncles and daughters of your maternal aunt who immigrated with you and the believing women if she gives herself to the prophet this is only for you excluding other believers we certainly know what we have made obligatory upon them concerning their wives and those that their right hand possesses. But this is for you in order that they will be upon you. No discomfort as ever is Allah is forgiven and merciful. So clearly we see here, you know, Muslims can have four wives and they can have as many concubines as they want. So Muhammad could have as many concubines as he wants. Then he had the nine wives. Then Allah is giving him permission to have as many believing women. And here we also see that um, Muhammad does not even need to give a dowry. So basically he can sleep with the women and that is his due regard. So we have to ask ourselves, does this sound self-serving? You know, Christians believe Jesus was God. But when we read the Bible, it says Jesus obeyed all the laws, all the commands of Moses. He did not break the laws. He had no special privileges. But how come Muhammad, he has privileges beyond, above and beyond the people. Moses did not have privileges above and beyond the people. None of the prophets had privileges above and beyond the people. So why has Muhammad this man in the middle of Saudi Arabia who has got apparently divine revelation and now he is getting all the women that he wants, you know? This is what we want Muslims to consider. Why is his privileges so higher above everyone else's? I mean, it would seem to me that he has more authority than Allah himself because it would appear that he's like the person who can make the make their own rules abrogate it abrogate certain verses um in order to justify his actions and to me it would appear that he is making his own rules and he's creating his own religion and Allah is like somebody like a genie right right like somebody who actually works for works for uh for muhammad um mm. you know to satisfy so, his desire to keep him happy you want more wives i'll give you more wives you want concubines i'll give you more concubines uh, you know, so very self-serving uh, 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 revelations. That's that's what that's what I'm getting at. I mean, Muslims, uh, if if you think that we are um, yeah, well, your, your mean, scriptures, please. please come in, please come in. But we have in the well, house. Before, we, ah, before okay. we get them, on, let me just do the next two slides, and then okay. we we'll get them on. Yeah. So if we go cool. to the next okay. slide, cool, cool, cool. Okay. I got so, excited there. Eh? Too quickly, yeah. but cool, right. So, so this is just an explanation from Ibn Kafir, a confirmation. So it says, the prophet had a choice of either accepting or rejecting the believing women who offered themselves to him. Iman Ahmed recorded that Aisha used to feel jealous of the women who offered themselves to the prophet. She said, would a woman not feel shy to offer herself without any dowry? Then Allah revealed the ayah. So therefore the women just wanted to sleep with Muhammad. And she's saying, do these women have no shame? They're not even willing to, wanting to take a dowry, you know? And then if we go to the next slide. All right. We see in the hadith again, and Aisha says, I used to look down upon those ladies who had given themselves to Allah's messenger. And I used to say, can a lady give herself to a man? But when Allah revealed, you, O Muhammad, can postpone the turn of whom you will 
of them your wives and you may receive any of them whom you will there is no blame on you for if you invite one whose turn you have to set aside temporarily and then i said to the prophet i feel that your lord hastened in fulfilling your wishes and desires so as you also said uh jc it seems like allah seems to be muhammad's servant because even aisha noticed this as well i feel that your lord hastens fulfilling your wishes and desires now imagine when we see previous prophets god didn't you know try to appease, appease them no one said to them i feel like your lord hastens in fulfilling your wishes and desires so we have allah given muhammad as many women as he likes and he's been telling people to you know get out the house of the prophet when you're <laughs> you finish, when your time is over so you know because he's shy to tell them to leave Let's well this that. is it you know and these are the things we're asking people to consider does this really sound like someone who's getting true revelation or someone who is you know the puppet of their god so um yeah rob or k wants to come on all right excellent thank you for that paper boy thank you uh yeah i'm gonna give okay i think rob is next on the queue so rob Silla. God bless hey, you, brother. What's up, guys? God bless. <laughs> How are you? What's How up? Are you? What's up? I'm hey, good. good in the hood. Happy, happy yeah. to be back again. Yes, um, sir. What's up? I was, uh, Rob, I was supposed to upload your little segment um, where you debated uh, our Muslim friend yesterday. Um, but I, guess I was really tied up uh, today, so which means that I will upload a little segment or after this live stream, and then you can, by all means, uh, download it on your channel and put it up on your channel if, if you wish. Cool, no cool, problem, cool. Uh, Rob. So, Rob, yeah, any comments on what's been happening so far? Yeah, uh, you guys are doing amazing, man. You're bringing down the hammer on the prophet of Islam uh, today. What's happening, uh, people boy? Keep doing, keep doing what you do, bro. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, get these Abdul's busted. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, seems that not many Muslims are can actually handle the truth. So uh, I want to add something on uh, the earlier uh, ayah that you mentioned, chapter 33, ayah 50, if that's yeah. okay. Cool. Uh, if we go to Tafsir al-Qurtubi for chapter 33, ayah 50, chapter 33, ayah 50. Tafsir al-Qurtubi, one of the biggest old school scholars of Islam. If we go through his uh, tafsir for this ayah, we can find that Muhammad had 16 privileges. 16, not one, not two, but 16. Uh, actually, if you uh, go through um, some uh, of the privileges, yeah, if, uh, if you go through some privileges, uh, for example, uh, let's say Muhammad attacks a tribe, let's say a Jewish tribe. The big screen TV goes to Muhammad. That's one of the, basically one of the privileges, right? Fifth of the booty will go to the prophet of Islam. Let me go to the 10th one. The 10th one, and let, any, me, um, let me read the Arabic first, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, a paper boy. Do you have, Sorry? Any, do you have a yeah, link we can put there, on the screen? Yeah, yes, uh, please, unfortunately, please. it's only in Arabic. Do you know Arabic, my oh, friend? Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll just hold down I do. Video. Yeah. So <laughs> well, maybe uh, before the user they want to read it as well, like we can just pull it on. Yeah. Then. Let's see if I can get it. No problem. Sure. Well, if you say the reference, Rob, people can look it up in English. Yeah. Um, Have you, wait. Let, let me, me. I. You. You said thirty-three forty, right? No, fifty. Thirty-three fifty. The one that ah, okay. our brother Paperboy just mentioned uh, earlier. Maybe you can go okay. back. Uh, uh, a screen back, uh, Paperboy. For, so Let's that people back. can see it on the screen, right? All right, should, should I pull the presentation? Okay, cool, let me pull yeah, the presentation. Yeah, okay, okay. so it, it maybe go. talks easier for the people who are watching. Um, I, I, will, I, will, I will look up uh, the link uh, and I will share it, okay, later. But uh, let me this go okay. to, the, to the 10th uh, privilege. So there are 16 privileges. If Muhammad attacks uh, a tribe, the, the biggest booty goes to Muhammad. So let's say the big screen TV goes to Muhammad. But the 10th one, and that's the most damaging one, Al-Ashir, the 10th, if waqa'a basarahu ala imra'a wajib ala zawjiha talaquha wa halla lahu nikahuha. Translation, if Muhammad looks upon a married woman, a married Muslim woman, 
her husband must immediately divorce her and hand her over to Muhammad so Muhammad can do nikah to her. You know what the word nikah means, right? It doesn't mean marriage. So imagine you are walking on the street of Mecca and Muhammad sees your wife. You're a Muslim man. Muhammad flirts with your wife. He falls in love with, with your wife. You have to divorce her and give her to, over to Muhammad. Is this a man of God, guys? Or is this Rob, nothing but a... Rob, yeah. can I just ask, the Arabic word within this context for looks upon, yeah. does it mean look with lust or does it just mean glance, look, um, observe? Like no, it's, it's implicit it's, in the text yeah. that it yeah. means like well, check him out. Let me okay. let me just translate exactly what it said. If if Muhammad looks lustful, if he looks ah. at a woman, I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, he thinks that it's her sister. She's like his right. sister or his aunt or uh, his. Uh, you know, he's yeah. he's looking yeah. at her that he falls in love with her. He wants to have who wants to have her in her bed. In his bed, right? Jiggy, jiggy. So, yeah. okay. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wants to have. So basically, if he looks at a woman and he likes yeah. the woman, regardless if she's married or not, yeah. and if he wants to do jiggy, jiggy, he would, yes. he would just have that get woman. It, get it, getting basically. jiggy with it, right? Like uh, wow. Michael, my, D. Mike Larry would have said it, right? <laughs> no, um, so hold on. So hold on. So he's looking yeah. with the lust and therefore yeah. is an adulterer in his heart, according to Christ. Exactly. And then he wants to commit actual adultery. Yeah. Like, or not even that, he wants the husband to divorce her just in order for him to mutter her off, or I don't even know, like, just get a bit and then let her carry on walking because then she can go back to the first husband. No, 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 this is not yeah. about going back. This is, this is, no, but I'm saying, about what what he's divorcing, if he doesn't want to marry them, if yeah. he only wants to know them intimately, why not leave them married and bring a revelation that says I can just have a go when I feel like it and you can have a back, mate? That kind of thing. Yeah, well, it's Islam, right? Muhammad can do whatever he wants. There is no limitation for Muhammad. And this actually uh, should ring a bell uh, because if we go to the story, uh, let's say, of King David, God did not say to Muhammad, it's okay, right? Or, or to, to King David, it's okay, you can have her. No, God yeah. punishes King David. But here we see that Allah says to Muhammad, go ahead, you can have the wife of your adopted son because Muhammad doesn't need her any, uh, her, his, his son doesn't need her anymore. So you, it's okay, take her for yourself. It's so, almost as if you're implying, Rob, I don't yeah. mean to put words in your mouth, but it's almost as if you don't believe that Muhammad was in touch with God. Is that is that all right? Like kind of suggestion? What yeah, you're saying? It, it, it he seems, could have been that, making stuff up that suited him. Yeah, Muslims always claim that uh, Allah and God of the Old Testament are the same God. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. But God of, the, uh, of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, it's an insult for him for such a so-called prophet to act in this kind of behavior. So God, instead of uh, Allah, instead of punishing Muhammad, like God of the Holy Bible punishing King David and King Solomon, he see, yeah. we see here that Allah is condoning what Muhammad is saying and actually he's yeah. helping him instead of punishing him. Mm. So how can wow. this be the same God? How can Muslims even the same dare God to that claim? said one yeah. man and one woman become one flesh, not four women, one man, and then yeah, a different exactly. man if they all go off and come back again after sleeping with an... I don't remember those verses. Maybe those are the corrupted parts of the Bible. Maybe they were removed illegally. Yeah. Like, Maybe we, yeah. we should ask God why he didn't create Adam and Eve number one, two, three, and four, like in Islam. There is that. <laughs> yeah, it would have. I mean, they'd have needed a whole heap of apples to start yeah. with. I mean, I don't know. There was. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it the seems as else, if, yeah. yeah, it seems as if Muslims want to tell us by uh, giving us these tafsirs for chapter 33, ayah 50, they actually want to prove to us that Muhammad's Allah is no one else but Satan, and Muhammad is the agent of Satan because it's an insult to God for a man to commit adultery with someone else's wife stealing someone else's wife i mean jesus says if you look uh, you know uh, with your own eyes to someone's wife you already committed uh, adultery in your heart right yeah. but what about islam we see that in islam it's the opposite and that's let that that, let that which god has joined together let no man tear asunder except some dude who's coming mm -hmm. shortly i guess mm -hmm. yeah. wow so you can see muslims muslims all of you guys that claim that we worship the same God, 
that the profits are all the same. You can see very clearly that's not the case. If you and remember if the shake in the park, like the and please. do you remember that? Ah, he admitted the that. Sh yeah. Shaky shake. Yeah, of course. Shaky shake already admitted this. And, um, the big guy. Yeah, the big guy. He admitted this. But I think he, he sort of backed down afterwards. Uh, he sort of like re retracted yeah. his, his position because he knew that it was very damaging to, to his mm. religion. And the unfortunately, shake. we don't see no Muslims coming on board. So, you yeah. Um. I wanted to just raise a quick point. I was listening only briefly because I'm buried under some work that I have to do at the moment. But what I was thinking is that the Aisha's implication, I think she was very clever in the way that she worded her statement about how lucky, supposedly, Mohammed was, but also the fact that the Quran itself declares him over and over and over again to be nothing but a warner, merely a warner, just a warner. Like, there are so many ways that you can say and nothing else, like just a, only a warner. So even the prophethood, even the being able to claim certain privileges, why would God send a mere warner, like nothing other than that, to be able to enjoy other people's wives, to be able to take the massive share of theft? Because mm -hmm. thou shalt not steal is still a relevant verse, whether you're under the old or new covenant, like and... Yeah, if, if Allah is, uh, sorry, if Muhammad is claiming that Jibril told him, that Allah told Jibril that uh, he's entitled to this share of, it's theft, basically. The murder, like he condoned murder, somebody was strangled, he said there was no blood money due, and it was a Jew, actually. So there are times when he literally goes against what Yahweh has ordained to be correct um, in his position as merely a warner. So... Mm -hmm. I guess I'd like someone to explain that to me, but they've been trying for years and I don't see it. Yeah, guys, if, if I want to add uh, on top of what we uh, said earlier about chapter 33, ayah 50, uh, you know, when uh, Muhammad, you know, took the wife of his adopted son, Zayd ibn Muhammad, at that time, uh, Zayd was called Zayn ibn Muhammad, Zayd, the son of Muhammad, you know, when he stole, when he stole his wife, uh, the people, you know, even at that time, I mean, we're talking about 1400 years ago, even people at that time, they thought, hey, this, this cannot be happening. This is not normal. You just stole uh, basically your daughter-in-law. You are sleeping around with your daughter-in-law. So people came to complain to him. And what Allah, what does Allah do? Allah again saving Muhammad's peepee, sending down the ayah and mm. abolishes what? abolishes adoption suddenly then Zayd ibn Muhammad goes back with it and takes his he has to take his la old last name right so it's but Rob Rob I see often, Muhammad yeah. Rob on YouTube I often see adverts for Muslim like fostering or adoption agencies or telling me how many orphans there are and then I wonder Allah's um, all knowingness when he um, you know, in order to protect Muhammad, got rid of adoption because then there's all these orphans that unfortunately, like decent Muslim households, can't adopt them. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, yeah. can you imagine, guys? Can you imagine and try try to think about it? How many poor orphans there are because of Muhammad's? Sorry to say, guys, I'm not trying to, you know, because of Muhammad's uh, male part. Allah wants to save Thanks, Muhammad's try. male part. Because of that, all these children cannot be adopted anymore in, uh, into Islam. They can, right? they can maybe Muslims. be married off if they're female, Rob. So yeah. that's all. Can you imagine, guys, try not to cry for these poor children that cannot be adopted because of Muhammad's male part, to say Muhammad's male part. Yes, I mean, I mean it's wow, saddening. Wow, it's wow. saddening. No. Very sad. Uh, very yeah. sad, especially, especially coming from a man who claims to be the best example to mankind. Yeah, uh, it's very very sad. Uh, yeah, but, daily... but, uh, yeah, my friend. Not only that. I mean, uh, can you imagine how many uh, uh, Muslim families? Uh, let's say you are a husband, a Muslim husband, and a, and a, and a Muslim uh, wife. You cannot get children in in a natural way, but you want to have a child. That means because of Muhammad's my male part, now you are not allowed as a Muslim to adopt a child. Can you imagine how many 
poor families. Children are a blessing of God. That's yeah. like quite clear. Like yeah. all life is precious to God. So yeah. I don't think that God would decide uh, all these children are going to be homeless. But I've just seen the comment. Is that what you were about to talk about, JC? Dale Lee's yeah. comment. Can Dale's I answer comment. that, exactly. I like, uh, Yeah, you can answer that. And then if Rob yes. would like to uh, follow up with his answer, yeah, and then maybe sure. people, if they'd like to chime in, then that'd be all right. cool. So, so what I see from the question without going to the Bible verse is that God, where God says he won't punish the innocent. So that's self-explanatory. They're innocent. The crimes of the fathers are the crimes of the fathers. God decides how many generations or not. God is all-knowing, as Allah claims to be. So if Allah were to say, for example, I will uh, you know, make Christians superior until the day of judgment, I will do this without any explanation. That's all fine if it's God. So God makes the rules up. But the fact that, that the word is innocent is that God is completely just. God is completely merciful where he chooses to exert that mercy. So a just uh, human judge would not punish the innocent for their associations. So that's the answer to that bit. And why did Yahweh punish an innocent fetus and women, David's wives? So, again, God is in control of everything apart from the verse which tells us that actually Satan has some control and dominion on the earth. God's authority is supreme. David is um, on the path to greatness, as it were. He is becoming the man that God destines him to be. And therefore, if uh, God, the same with Job, if God decides that a punishment will be exacted, um, we're unaware, I guess, of God's overarching plan for anybody. So we are to remain faithful to his word and his decisions are final there is no like court of appeal when it comes to god so i would say that david's wives were born into sin also i don't know what their private lives were uh the fetus the soul belongs to god everybody's soul belongs to god if he calls it home he calls it home i'm sure the fetus wasn't punished if you if you mean punishment by not living in a fallen sinful world with a heart that's desperately wicked i guess yes but but it's not, you know, it's not the same as abortion, for example. So that's my answer for Dale. God bless yes, you, Dale. Thank, thank yeah, God bless you, Dale. Um, it's, yeah, he Dale is, is um he's been following soccer fields for a long time, and and um, yeah, yeah, he always in has some interactions. Yeah, he always has questions. Yeah. And uh, who would like to answer this next? This question. We put, we put. I, I just want to say that even with that. With that incident, we see um, David said he will see his son in heaven again. He saw the see the child in heaven. So we, David was a prophet. He was inspired. So we know that soul went to heaven. But I'm going to send you when Del Lee says something, we like to get him busted. So uh, if you can put this on the screen, JC. Yep, I'm just clicking on the uh, the link. Hold on a second. Let me share the screen right now so bear with me um okay cool let's share the screen because uh obviously tell has an issue with children dying so we go to um are you able to zoom in that's the biggest that's it no that's it that's, we'll take your word for it okay. so this is the hadith from uh, muslim Sahi, one of the authentic uh, Sunni books, and it says, Aisha, the mother of the believers, reported that a child died. And I said, there is happiness for this child who is a bird from amongst the birds of paradise. Thereupon Allah's messenger said, don't you know that Allah created the paradise and he created the hell? He then, and then he created the, den the dwellers for this paradise and the, de the denizens for this hell. So here, basically, in this hadith, which is Saki, which is Saki, first of all, is Saki Muslim two six six two B book forty six hadith forty six. So here we see the story where the child is. Uh, let me just give the other one. I'll read the other one that goes with this. So it says, Aisha, the mother of believers, said that said that Allah's messenger was called to lead the funeral prayer of a child of the Ansar. And the Ansar were like the friends of the Muslims. They were like really good Muslims or whatever. So it says Allah's messenger 
there is a happiness for this child who was a bird from the birds of paradise, for it committed no sin, nor has he reached the age when one can commit sin. He said, Aisha, per adventure, it may be otherwise, because God created for paradise those who are fit for it while they were yet in their father's loins, and he created for hell those who are to go to hell. He created them for hell while they were yet in their father's loins. In so, in his backbone, I think that means to say. Hell, Allah has no problem of creating children for hell. So this child was a ch an innocent child that died. And Aisha thought, because children are innocent, this child must go to hell. But the prophet said, this is not the case. Allah has created people for hell straight away. So how do you feel that Allah has allowed a young innocent child to go to hell? Exactly. Uh, Paper Boy, is it okay if I can add something to what Dali Lee said? Yeah. Yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, brother. Uh, I sent the link uh, to uh, to the chat. If you can uh, show it on the screen, brother, the last link that I mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bear with, bear with yeah. me. The one that where I said I want to bring this one in the mix. Into yeah, the mix. Yeah, I got, okay. It, show, that, cool. show that one on the screen, please. Uh, let, me, let me get him busted and let me get his profit busted. Watch. And he's going to, and I'm going to make him say that he regretted what he uh, said earlier uh, in the chat. Why? Because now he's going to throw his own prophet under the bus. Watch. According to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, let's say chapter 35, 18, it says, any translation, I don't care, and no burdened soul can bear another's, bur another's burden. So according to the Quran, in this ayah, no one can bear the burden of another soul. Right, even in Islam, even if you're a Muslim, but and here comes the problem. If you if you can uh, make that hadith bigger so that people can watch it, according to Muhammad from a Sahih hadith, a Sahih Muslim, Messenger of Allah said, on the day of resurrection, Allah will deliver to every Muslim a Jew or a Christian and say, this is your ransom from hellfire. Did you catch it, guys? Here, Muhammad spanked his own Allah, contradicted his, the Quran of Allah and showing that uh, for every Muslim, his sins, they were going, Allah will take a Jew and a Christian and he will put the sins of the Muslims on the shoulders of the Jews and the Christians. There you go. Thank you for mentioning this. By saying that, now you just spanked your prophet and we'll see how Delhi Lee will, is going to jump around this Disaster that he just created for it for his own profit. Also, Rob, there's another, okay. I think it's Surah 6. I'm just going off the top of my head where it says that you will take your own sins plus the sins of those you have led astray. So, therefore, you will wow. carry the burden of another as a Muslim. And that also contradicts the preceding ayah that you spoke of. Yeah. And, and do you see now what Dalili is saying? That hadith is rejected, <laughs> brother, but it's Sahih Muslim, brother. Yes. Sahih it's the Quran. Quran, brother. I just brother. quoted the Quran, Rob. The Quran yeah. is not yeah. uh, rejected. The Quran <laughs> is accepted. So. Guys, you know, I, I, I am waiting. I'm waiting for the day that the Muslim will say we will reject the Quran. Not only Sahih Muslim and Sahih. Bukhari, like, like the gentleman yesterday, he rejected Sahih Bukhari. Muslims, so, you know, as if we continue doing what we do, there will be a day that Muslims will say, this ayah is da'if, brother. But they do. They come wow. to Christ regularly. Yeah. Exactly. So they have to maybe maintain some anonymity <laughs> for a little while. Imagine, why is it called Sahih Muslim, but if uh, you can still reject it? It's Sahih. It only means can... Sahih if it yeah. agrees with the Muslim's point of view in that particular <laughs> argument. Basically, can you put the link oh, on man. Again? oh man, oh man, oh man. Casey, yeah, can you put the link I, I've sent just so we can confirm with Daily? Yeah, cool. So let's uh uh cool. Let me put this put the oh, reference well on this screen. The wrong reference then. Okay, cool. So it's coming up now. Is it, it's in this one. Okay. Uh sorry. But let me let me share it. Well, maybe Dale Lee may have missed the beginning of the show. So here we have a fatwa from the big sheikhs in Saudi Arabia. One, uh, you know, these guys have their really long beards. So someone asked them, should every Muslim believe in the hadith of Bukhari 
and Muslim. Are there any weak or fabricated hadith in the two sahihs? So they said, as for the prophetic sunnah, which explains the Quran, Allah has made numerous great scholars to safeguard it. These savants spared no effort to protect the record of the sunnah of the prophet. For example, Imam Bukhari, Ibn Masur recorded the book of in the book of Al Sayyar by Al Zahabi was ace. He was a sign of a divine creation in his insight and knowledge. It says uh, he was also much superior to other scholars as men superior to women. He is one of Allah's miracles working, walking on earth. I have never seen on earth a more learned in the prophetic hadith, nor better in memorizing than it, than Muhammad Ibn Ishmael al-Bukhari. And they say Muslim is second to only Bukhari. And then they say uh, Mus the Muslim... So also of the Sahih Muslim occupies the second place of al-Bukhari. Both books were received with full acceptance by the Muslim Umar due to meeting all the conditions of the highest degree for a sound hadith. Only a straying innovator would contest anything of either book. So according to the big scholars in Saudi Arabia, Dale Lee is an innovator. Oh. By the way, it was Quran 1625. I just quoted it in the back chat, if anyone wants to look. Daily, um, I think Daily has another comment for the family. Christians don't understand that just like the Talmud and Hadith, anything that contradicts the Quran and Old Testament is to be rejected, like Talmud exactly. and sex exactly. with a three-year-old. Exactly, JC said they have to reject the Quran because the Quran, Quran contradicts the Quran. 16.25 contradicts the verse that Rob bought in the first place. So if you, you can either carry the sin or you can't carry the sin. There's no two ways about it. The burden, sorry. Because I just take that mm. ayah anyway to be like a little dig at Christ, to be fair, because Muhammad knew or Jibreel knew, somebody knew that Christ is carrying the mm -hmm. burdens of others. So, so if, if we can go to the next slide... Um... We'll, we'll kind of address people, yeah, topic uh, questions a bit later on as well. So, so um, this is a uh, one Rob might be able to help us with. Okay, so I think it's slide number. Uh, I think it's the following slide, right? Let me close. This. Okay, cool. So, sorry, family. Eighty-five. Cool. So here we see another blunder in the Quran. So maybe the is going to, you know, uh, this is a contradiction. So it says, indeed, Allah and his angels, and this is the Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad Ghali translation, who was a big scholar at Al-Azhar University. He puts, indeed, Allah and his angels shower prayers, yes, saloon upon the prophet. O oh, you who believe, pray for him and submit on full submission. So... Here, this. Yeah, maybe this. you want me to read the Arabic too, bro? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. In Allah, wa malaikatu you salluna ala nabi. Ya yuhal ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So <laughs> the word is you salluna, right? You salluna. When I say, ana usalli, you salli, ana usalli, I am praying. So when Allah is Praying to who is Allah praying? I mean, when I pray, I pray to my God. So when Allah prays, to who does Allah pray? Does He pray to Himself? Does Allah pray to another God, or does Allah pray to Muhammad? And we understand. Let's say, let we go, let us go with the Muslims. Let us say Allah is blessing. It does not say that, but let us be politically correct for a second. We understand if you say that it's blessing, so Allah bless. Okay, but it says Allah and the angels are doing the blessing since when do angels bless people guys isn't the blessing always coming from god ah here we have a disaster so do you see it's nothing but praying it has always been praying go ahead my friends yeah, uh jc can we get the next slide yeah well, yeah actually tells us very very helpfully um unfortunately he lost his temper with you rob but he since told us that yes allah does pray and it who does he pray to? He prays to Muhammad and the believers. So I think Yaya's wrapped that one up for the rest of uh, 
Exactly. Like we saw yeah. the clown Mohammed Hijab confirm that Allah prays not. He pays four. <laughs> no, two. No, the problem. Guys, good that you mentioned that. By and the they way, all clapped as it. well. Everybody yeah. cheered. All the <laughs> Here comes the problem. Here comes the problem, guys. You know, when he said it, he actually Another spanked one? himself. Yeah. When he said mm. Allah does uh, pray four, not two. Wait. Mm. It does not say pray four or two. It says Allah on. So he said to David, Wood, I'm going to teach you Arabic lessons. I know I'm, I am going to uh, teach you Arabic lessons, but wait, Mr. Arab expert. It does not say mm -hmm. for, it says Allah on the prophet. So you but see, as we know, he's actually, actually a Hebrew expert. expert. Yeah, and he's an Hebrew expert. Elijah means God with us. <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> so this guy claims to know Arabic, but at the same time, he does not know Arabic, and he wants to teach David Wood Arabic lessons, but this guy himself does not know Arabic. Can you imagine? Yeah. It's not four, it's not two, it's on. <laughs> and and oh. what happens is Muslims wow. lie and they, try and, claim, they yeah. try and lie and say it means blessing. Now, if we go to the next slide. Okay. So this is an extract from the Muhammad Messenger of Allah from uh, Qadi Iyad, and he lived in the 11th century. Now, in his book, he put, the commentators and the etymologists disagree regarding the words of Allah. Allah and his angels pray blessing on the prophet about whether the word pray refers to both Allah and the angels or not. Some of them allow it so to refer to both, whilst others forbid it, forbid it because of the idea of partnership. They make the pronoun refer to the angels alone and understand the ayah as Allah prays and his angels pray. And he goes on to say, Allah makes the merit of his prophet clear by first praying blessing on him himself and then the prayer of the angels and then by commanding his slaves to pray blessing and peace on him as well. Uh, and also he goes on, uh, I haven't got it in the slide, he then confirms that it is praying because he said Al Muhammad made a distinction in, an, in, an, in, an, in another hadith um, where he said uh, blessing I think is Baraka and um, praying, which is uh, what, what's the word, um, Rob? Yeah, you, uh, Allah should have said if Allah was so called God of Islam and He's not yeah, God yeah. of confusion as He claims to be, because He said we send the Quran uh, a very detailed explanation, right? But Allah, if He should, if He didn't want to cause this mass confusion, He should have said, In Allah wa malaikatu yubarikuna. Because barakah is the is the word, right? Mm -hmm. But the verb is yubariku, yubariku. So, but here comes another problem. If Allah would have said Allah and his angels, yubarikuna, we still have a disaster. Why? Because since when do angels bless? The blessing should always come from God. How can angels bless anyone? Right. Yeah, they can bring it from God. So they can give news yeah. of a blessing. So yeah. So either way. Him. So either way, Muhammad busted Allah when he fabricated this ayah. Either way. Exactly. If, so and 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 with this with this from Qadi Iyad. Obviously, this is the 11th century. This is way before even you know Christians brought this up. Muhammad Hijab, and he's saying <laughs> tomologists were arguing of the original meaning of the word, where the commentators. They knew Muhammad got himself busted, so therefore they had to reinterpret the word because they know they Allah. To lie. And this is why he has highlighted the disagreement between them because the etymologists know the roots of the word and what they mean, whereas the commentators, they want to fabricate everything. Everything is a lie to try and get people to come to Islam. So we even see in Islamic literature, they're big scholars. And those who don't know Qadi Ayyad, he's a big scholar he's got a university named after him so he's very very well respected within the islamic community yeah uh, paper boy uh, let us let us make it even more worse for the muslims here and here is why when muslims pray right when muslims pray five times a day when they pray part of their prayer is and let me say the arabic first and translate it ayyuhal nabiyyu right so they are addressing Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu, right? Ya ayyuhal So they are actually talking directly to Muhammad, 
right? They are talking directly to Muhammad when they pray. Wait a second, Muhammad is dead. He is dead and somewhere rotting in Medina, buried in Medina somewhere, right? How are you calling Muhammad not God of Islam, but you are praying to someone who is dead? How is Muhammad not God? When you pray, should you not only pray to Allah? Why are you praying to Muhammad? Salamu alayka, ya ayyu nabi right? Salamu alayka, do you hear it? Assalamu alayka, ya ayyu nabi So that means they are actually talking directly to Muhammad. Peace be upon you, Muhammad, when they pray. Peace be upon you. Did you catch it? That's yeah. what they say when they pray. It seems like there's so many blunders, they, they just don't, uh, you know. Seems almost as if it's made up, I'm just saying. Because that would be necromancy. Yeah, exactly. Praying to Muhammad. I mean, when we pray to Jesus, we understand why Christians pay, pray to Jesus, because he's our God, right? He's, he's the only he's uh, intercessor. Living. Exactly. He's the, he's the only intercessor, right? So we, it, uh, when we pray uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, that means we pray to the Father and the Holy Spirit too, right? Because he is, he is our God. intercessor. But in Islam, how can you pray to a dead man? You know, the Quran says that Muhammad is nothing but a mere warner. He is a warner. So why are you Muslims pray to Muhammad, the dead Muhammad, who is not even alive at the moment? Only Isa in Islam is, is so-called with Allah, right? So why yeah, but are hang you on a minute. I heard, but, no, but hang I, on I, a minute. I heard, I heard, wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, just, okay. okay. I, I heard that the, the, the context of this is because if the angels oh, are praying to Muhammad, then how much... No, sorry. If the angels and Allah is actually praying for Muhammad, how much how much more you should pray to Muhammad, which is obviously directly to the Muslims. So I think that's the context behind this... this, no, this, this, this uh, you know, GC, it's not, it, forget about the ayah. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about chapter 33, ayah 56. I'm talking about the, the, this very important fact. When Muslims mm -hmm. pray, when they start to pray five times a day, they talk directly to Muhammad. They say, peace be upon mm -hmm. you, Muhammad. In the present tense and as well. So they are talking directly to Muhammad while praying. And that's the disaster right there. Did you catch the other thing to mention is that if Isa is merely a prophet, if he is a human only, why is he immortal until the day of, like when he comes back to kill all the little piggies? What have the pigs ever done? Like, <laughs> and smash up some wood. <laughs> like, why is he the, still alive if he's mortal and well. yet he's immortal? Let's not forget the cross but as is, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the pieces of wood, yeah. But he is. Um, the word of Allah also and the Holy Spirit is thrown in there it's not Jibril because Jibril did not breathe Jibril into Mary or Maryam like I, if you find one contradiction one error then obviously you have to reject the rest of it because like we said previously like you must reject anything that contradicts the Quran and if the Quran does it itself you have to just throw the whole stuff out like I don't know how many I don't know how many times Takiya or like Miss guided a uh, fear of being killed as an apostate. I don't know what it is, but I don't know how many times sincere truth-seeking Muslims will be able to like combat these kind of errors, which we can literally, I've done it on YouTube, you can find one ayah and you can spend half an hour just gently pulling it apart, but you can't do it with the Bible because every part of that scripture is God-breathed. And they're like, I don't see the parallel. I don't see how it can be comparable. I don't see it at all. But I'm willing to, you know, for someone to explain it. Yeah. You know, let's say Rob Christian, uh, uh, guys, Rob Christian maybe is lying or something. We can also prove from the Quran, from chapter 48, maybe if you can show it on the screen, uh, JC, chapter 48 of the Quran, ayah 9. Chapter 48, ayah 9. Surat al fatih chapter 48, ayah 9. Uh, let me read the Arabic, if that's okay with you guys. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا It says, it, let me translate it, it says that you may believe in Allah and the Rasul and to assist him, meaning assisting him in battle, who? The Rasul, because Muhammad was the one who was doing the wars. 
and you have to honor or respect him. And the last verb, you have to glorify him every morning and evening. What? You have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening according to chapter 48, I 9? Wow! That's shirk. That's blasphemy. Yes. Now, Muslims, Muslims who are going to say the, the last verb, what to sabbihuhu, to glorify him, tasbih subhan, what to sabbihuhu, it goes back to Allah. No, no, you can't play all these games with me. I am an Arabic native speaker. I went to school. They taught me the last mentioned person in a sentence, in an Arabic sentence, the last mentioned person in a sentence, all the verbs, all the words that come back, go uh, come after the last person, go back to the last person. Who is that last person? Is the Rasul. Again, you have to believe in Allah and the Rasul, and you have to assist him in battle. You have to honor and respect him, and you have to glorify him every morning and evening. If that's not blasphemy, if that's not worship of Muhammad, then I don't know what worship means. Well, exactly. Solid, solid, solid points there, uh, Rob. I do hope that somebody can. I challenge, yeah, I challenge side. any Muslim to, to come and refute me on this. Chapter 48, I 9. Clear blasphemy, clear shirk that every Muslim, every morning and evening, he must glorify Muhammad. You see how important wow. it is to, to know actually Arabic, to refute the, this blasphemy, this evil man made cult made by Muhammad for Muhammad to be worshipped by the Muslims. Do you have any Muslims that have uh, any, you know, any yeah, and if you to Yeah, no, 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 we have one answer. We have only one answer. It's uh, one one of the Muslims. He calls himself Jesus. Jesus was an atom too. Rob Christian, you are not lying. You are just a child. Is that what? Is that anything you have? Is that it? Is that it? Well, that, wow. it I don't want to be you, man. I don't want to be you. <laughs> It's no. nice to sound like you're young, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Take it as a compliment, Rob. <laughs> yeah. I wish there I was, was 16 a, again. There was a, a comment by um, Del Lee. Uh, JC, I posted the link for Caddy Iyad's book, uh, the online version, in the chat. If you just put copy that into the main chat, you can go and have a look and see that his own scholars have confirmed that it is prey. Yeah, okay, let maybe, me... maybe Jesus was an atom too. I know here, you yeah, know, you Muslims. You that. Yeah, no, you post, this... post, that, that's the book. If you post the link in the in the chat, so people can okay. actually, yeah, have a have a look at it. Yeah, maybe uh, this Muslim can help us out. Maybe you can come uh, live on air here and refute where and, and say where Rob Christian lied, right? Maybe you can refute me, Muslim. Well, yes, so we do hope that somebody can jump in. Absolutely. It's been silent all week, and this should take note. You see, when we put Islam under the microscope, no Muslim is willing to jump on board. If this was a topic about the Bible, I'm sure we would have every uh, speaker's corner person, every Muslim wanting to jump on. But when it comes to defending Islam, yeah. the phone lines are silent. <laughs> silent, silent. No answer, no answer, family from the that what is happening, yeah. Muslims. Come on now, paper boy. You never heard about chapter 48, uh, I and 9 before that this is no. clear blasphemy, yeah. yeah. You know, because if no, you go to go to any translation, they do taqiyya. My friend, Muhammad is the last mentioned person in any language. If you have a, I think, even in English, the last person. According to Arabic grammar rules, when you have two persons, in this case, Allah and Muhammad, all the verbs, all the words that come after the last person go back to that last person. And how can we actually understand? Because it says, assist assist him. That's the first verb, assist him. Uh, Muslims, when you're going to say it goes back to Allah, when you lie and you say this goes back to Allah, does Allah need assistance in battle from Muslims? No. Allah does not because he's God, right? So as you see, the first verb already explains it away. The first verb explains that this goes back to the last person. Who is that last person? It's Muhammad. It's the Rasul. So assist him in battle, honor and respect him, and glorify him every morning and evening. Outrageous. If the Muslims want to comment, if you do make your case now, jump on the panel and give your... Reputation. 
If not, we will continue to the next slide. And remember, guys, remember to hit the like button. And also remember, remember to subscribe to Rob Christian's channel if you already haven't. He's doing great things in dismantling Islam. Thank you. I appreciate it, my friend. Oh, you no. can nip over to mine as well. Thanks, paper boy. And cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't, guys, don't forget about K. I mean, come on. Doing yeah. semi great we work. We don't want her to become sad. Come on, guys, help her out too. She's a very good sister. <laughs> yeah, we love you, K. Don't worry. We love Thank you. Thank you, darling. Big ups, big ups, this K. Big ups, this K. I make sure the family has subscribed to to her channel. It's called Say so uh, K Soccer Films. Excellent. So, um, there's a question again by Jesus was a Latin too. Uh, who who would like to answer this question? But this doesn't have anything to do with the topic. What does does the word salat mean mercy? No, because uh, mercy in Arabic is rahma. How did rahma, how did mercy, rahma, become salat, which means prayers? <laughs> it always meant praying. Praying, salat, you salli. Baraka, blessing. Rahma, mercy. You see? If Allah yeah. claims to be God and he claims that his Quran is the, the perfect explained book, why is he causing this mass confusion that we need many later scholars, right? 200 years, 300 years, 400 years, later scholars like uh, Al-Qurtubi, like uh, Ibn Kathir, who was actually, Ibn Kathir was born in Andalusia, in Spain. Why do we not need, uh, you know, uh, later people, Later guys, mortal guys like you and me, to explain what Allah did not explain, right? That's a disaster. Well, that's it. And as the Quran says, uh, Rob, which is quite strange that the Christians and the Jews made the monks and the rabbis their, their laws. But it seems like now... Yeah, chapter Muslim 9, 31, right? That's the besides one you're... Besides who, though, paper boy? Besides who? Besides, who? besides Allah Allah and, and Isa. Isa. Yeah. yeah, the Muslims have now made their scholars their lords, Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn Kafir. So yeah, exactly. Allah has refuted these people for doing this thing, but then the Muslim community is doing the very same thing Allah accused the Christians and the Jews of doing. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is when you uh, when you go to chapter 9, I 31, that you just mentioned, Paperboy, uh, that's a very good uh, one, actually. Why? Because if you go to any t uh, translation, they are going to tap dance and they need to correct Allah because Allah says in his Arabic Quran do you hear it? Allah wa al -Masih. Allah wa al -Masih. it does not say uh, something else it clearly says Allah and the Messiah so uh, how can we translate it they have taken their scholars and monks as lords beside Allah and the messiah so who are the real gods allah and the messiah hallelujah mm -hmm. even the quran Amen. must Amen. proclaim that al masih the messiah is god by the way, nine, by the way if you use certain search engines for arabic translation which i do sometimes i sent rob a private message and i wanted to say the uh, peace of christ be with you and he messaged me back saying don't don't call him allah and i said i didn't <laughs> and then I realized that even like Google recognizes Jesus as God because I put in Jesus and it came back the Arabic word for God. So that was quite uh, quite heartening, actually. Yeah. Actually, we don't need the Quran, right? We don't need the Quran to prove that Jesus is Lord. We can throw away the Quran away. But since Muslims have to obey what the Quran says, we can use the Quran to show that even the Quran, we don't need it, right? But even the Quran proclaims that Al Masih and Allah are equal. Mm, cool. Guys, who would like to answer Islam is the truth? Um, the question that appears on the screen. Oh, sorry, I was off looking somewhere else. One second. So it says, it says Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, He's of Allah, not God, as in Surah 5, yeah. 116. Oh, please uh, let me do this one. Let first... me do this one, please. Yeah, that's please. the right. that's the worst <laughs> ayah that you can go to as a Muslim. The most worst hold, ayah. Hold, hold on. on, Rob. Rob, hold if on, you look at the on, infancy on. gospels, wow. The infancy, yeah, go the infancy gospels have Christ speaking from the cradle. Have, yeah, speaking from the cradle, saying, "I am surely the Son of God." And amazingly, 
not through Jibreel, as Yahya attests himself. Yahya says, yes, there is plagiarism in the Quran. Therefore, I'm saying it can't be divine revelation. But then a very similar, almost exact copy, even plagiarism detection software at, at universities would pick it up. All of a sudden, <laughs> Christ is in the cradle. And now he's saying, I am merely a prophet. I am only a so-and-so. Like, basically... Um, I don't take the word, if it's a Quran reference telling me that Christ said this, I completely disregard it because Christ is one of the most well-recorded figures in history, along with Abraham, along with the major uh, figures in the Bible. All of his words were attested to, all of his words had eyewitnesses to them, they were faithfully documented, they have been deconstructed and poured over by atheists, Muslims, Christians for centuries and centuries and we don't find any of the contradictory basic nonsense that we find with a clear and concise quran that needs a whole horde of tafsirs and scholars arguing amongst themselves changing their minds sahih gradation then it's a sand then whatever so basically if the quran tells me that jesus said oh but i breathed life into this bird by the permission of allah or actually Allah says, do you remember when? Because that's a good narrative to uh, insert information when Muhammad needed it. He, he, he only says he does it by the permission, not by the power. So therefore Christ is a creator. Allah says he is the best of creators, implying that he is not the only creator. Whereas we know from John 1 that Christ alone, or through or by Christ, all things were created. Nothing was created that wasn't created through or by him. So anything that contradicts my Bible, I am happy to dismiss it as fantasy. Like I don't mind where it comes from, which religious scripture, the mouth of which scholar. If it contradicts my Jesus, this Isa character, I'm sorry, that, that he's not the guy. Like he's surely not the guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, chapter 5, ayah 116 is the worst ayah to go to. Why? Here's why. Because if we go to the ayah, it says the following. Allah needs to ask Isa. Allah needs to ask Isa. As if Allah is not all-knowing, he needs to ask Isa. Did you say to the people, take <laughs> me and my mother, Mary, as two gods beside Allah? So this proves two times, not, not once, but twice, that Allah is not all-knowing. Allah needs to ask Isa, point number one. Point number two, Allah is not all-knowing. He does not know that the Christians do not worship Allah. We worship Jehovah, right? Jehovah. Yes. And we worship mm -hmm. the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The, we worship not the Mary. Father, the Son. And we, we don't worship Mary as two gods. So, and here it actually proves that we don't worship two gods or three gods because it's talking about Allah, God number one. Uh, Mary, God number two, and Isa, could, God number th three. And what have you done with the Holy Spirit? What have you done with the Holy Spirit? Why are you adding Mary into the mix? Do you see the problem? So chapter 5, I 116 is the worst, the worst ayah that you can go to. To make it even more worse for this person who mentioned chapter 5, I 116, if we go to chapter 4, I 171, I 171, Isa is not just a mere messenger. We don't have a problem with the word a messenger, right? A messenger. Because to make it even more worse, according to chapter 4, I 187, Isa is much more than a messenger. He is the word of Allah and yes. he is the spirit of Allah. Wow. Here we have a, a triune God in Islam. He is the messenger. He is the word of God and he is the spirit of God. Seems that Jesus is not just a simple mere being in Islam. And we show chapter 9 and 31 that Al-Masih, Jesus, is equal to Allah. Keep making it easy for us. Hadouken. Hadouken. Very easy. But very easy. Yeah, we'll go into the next slide. Uh, Jesus was an atom. If you want to answer to that, to that, just even click on the link for um, Kadi Iyad's book. He goes into it because he explains the hadith where there's a different differentiation between the words. So if you have any dispute, dispute with your scholar. Um, it's The information's in that book, so we don't need to 
um, actually go into that one. Answer there, Jesus was an atom too. Cool. So we're gonna go to the next slide, paper boy. If you don't mind, paper yeah. boy. So, cool. so let's. Yeah. Uh, As we said, we don't worship um, Allah. We worship Jehovah. So even this is something the Jews at the time of Muhammad realized. So if we see the Quranic verse, it says, so it says, they did not hold Allah in due esteem when they said Allah has not sent down anything to any human being. Say who has sent down the book brought by Musa as a light and a guidance for people which you keep in various sheets, some which you disclose and a lot which you conceal, and by which you were taught what you did not know. Neither you nor your fathers say Allah, then leave them to play with whatever they indulge in. So if we go to the next slide, uh, we'll go to the tafsir of, uh, I believe it's Maldudi. We go to the next slide, JC. So in the tafsir, we see it says, the context in which the words Allah has not sent down anything to any man occur in occur and their refutation clearly show that these were the words of the Jew. They uttered these words when the disbelievers and the Mishrakeen of Arabia asked them, tell us what the word of Allah has really been sent down to this man, Muhammad. The question had arisen because the Holy Prophet claimed, I am a prophet and the book is being sent down to me. The Quraysh and the Mishrik Arabs turned to the Jews because they possessed the book and believed in the prophet and could speak with authority. Therefore, their answer provided the opportunity with a strong weapon against Islam. And they repeated the answer as an argument to dissuade the people from it. That is why their answer has been cited here and refuted. Here is here a possible doubt should be removed. How can a Jew who believes in the, that the Torah has been sent down by, by God say Allah has not sent down anything to any man? A little thinking will show that a person in his obduracity often utters such things as are against his fundamental pr principles. So basically here we're seeing they've asked about Muhammad and the Jews didn't say Allah has not sent down anything to Muhammad. They refuted the concept of Allah at all because they said Allah has not sent down anything to anyone, not even Musa. So here the Jews are clearly rejecting Allah as a God because this is why, and I've underlined it, it says a little thinking will show that this person in his obduracity often utters such things as are against the fundamental principles because he says here is a possible out should also be removed how can a jew who believes that the torah has been sent down by god say allah has not sent down anything to any man so he's there ref clearly refuting the whole concept of allah so when jews when muslims say oh jews believe in allah no they don't we even see within your tafsirs they refuted the concept that allah has given any revelation they know jehovah has given revelation to the previous pro prophets but not allah So, any wanna anything, uh, Rob? Do you wanna add anything to that? No, my friend. Keep continue what you're doing. This yeah. is amazing stuff, bro. Continue. So, so we'll go to uh, the next slide, which proves Allah is not a god. So here we see Allah is the protector of the Kaaba. So it says, "Seest thou not how thy Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant?" He did not take, make their treacherous plan go astray, and he sent against them flights of birds, striking with them stones of baked clay. Then he did make them like an empty field of stalks and straw. So here is the, uh, the surah where it talks about... Um, actually, if we go to the next slide, I will, we'll no, go just, to the... Can we add something before we go to the next one, if that's okay? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Paperboy, this is very interesting uh, chapter, actually. It's a very small chapter, but this explains how Allah cannot uh, 
keep his promises. Allah promised, right? Whenever someone comes to attack Mecca, especially the Kaaba, he will send a army, an army of birds. Uh, with you know, imagine these are tiny birds with <laughs> with with, <laughs> with small uh, stones. Now, now here, this is talking about an army of elephant, the companions of the elephant. Now, Mecca, we know Mecca is a very very hot place. It's a middle of a desert. What? I mean, if you bring there one elephant, do you know how ma many liters, how many gallons of water just one elephant needs? What about an entire army of elephants? I mean, Hannibal took a wrong turn. Is that just, what Google, just, Google, <laughs> just Google and see how one elephant just how much water he needs. Not only for drinking, an elephant has very dry skin. An elephant will die if it does not put water gallons and liters of water on its body it will die because uh, the the skin is so thick uh, an elephant cannot sweat so he, he needs water to uh, to cool himself down so what about an Bye -bye. entire yes Do what we about with the birds then I, I vote for the birds yeah and the birds yeah. what about the yeah. birds what about the birds there's there were right. there were enemies of muslims Al Qaramita, maybe you heard of them. Al Qaramita, the Karamatians. Sorry if I'm butchering the English translation. The Karamat Karamita attacked the Kaaba, and uh, the leader of of the Karamita he destroyed the Kaaba, right? I With thought Allah was going to send all the elephants. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Well, well, yeah well, the army. What? What? Where are the army of birds? Is that a different right? day? Maybe he got him mixed up in his diary. Maybe, maybe Allah was asleep. Maybe Allah was tired. Who knows? But wow. uh, the leader of the Karamita he went on, on top of the Kaaba, he pissed on the Kaaba, and he challenged Allah, Allah, if you're there, destroy what me. What be upon him? <laughs> he what? He peed on the Kaaba. <laughs> what and be he upon took, him? He took the black stones with him. He broke the black stones into pieces, right? Because the black stone was a huge, big rock, right? They came, it's a meteor that came from heaven. It was like a... I thought Abraham of... built it. What? Hey, okay, just Didn't a second. It... Let me finish this. This is really Sorry, important. sorry. Yeah, so this was uh, the, the rock was is as big as a big football, right? A soccer game, right? Football. So he broke the, the this rock into small tiny pieces. Even if you go now to Mecca, you see only a couple of tiny pieces, right? So he broke it, and and more than ninety percent of the stone are gone. Where is Allah? Why is he not sending down his army uh, of birds to protect the Kaaba and the black stones? Where is Allah when you need him? Hmm. He can't enter in, so I mean, he, he might be busy shooting the stars at Jin as mm. meteors. I mean, it's a full time job coming down to listen to the prayers of the believers in the night time because yeah. it's night time somewhere all the time. So he must be just up and down, up and down. Like, it's hard work being out Yeah, and I mean, let's say Allah is patient, but is he patient um, for 20 years? The Karamita stole the black stones for 20 years and they, they lost the majority of the part of the rock of the black stone. This is why it's called black stone and the black stones in the first place. It's it was a one big in, uh, rock, right? Maybe Abraham didn't have planning permission. What do you reckon? Well, yeah. right. I mean, it's, it does it's, flood it's a, a lot there, doesn't it? It's like it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a poor like place to put it. I know. I think it was in Petra to start with. Maybe they should have stuck with the original. <laughs> yeah. This is this okay. is really damaging. Maybe damaging. he wanted to get the sun. I don't, yeah. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, this yeah, actually true. proves over and over and over that Allah is a fake dead God who cannot keep his promises. But so let's not forget true. also that the Kaaba is going to grow a tongue at the end of time and a mouth to mm. start grassing up Jews. Like, I mean, I don't know. Or to identify who is a true Muslim, but obviously not the true Muslims who are in London, just the ones who are round about the Kaaba at the time. So you can point them out with his no hand. I don't know. Yeah, I've gone so, off on a tangent. Sorry, paperboy. <laughs> if we go to the next slide, so it's basically just covering again what uh, Rob was basically saying. So if we go to the next slide, um, just to give a more detail about the same story. Um, JC? Next slide. And just in terms of Dale Lee's comment, Targum Jews had no problem with Allah as God, Tafsir, Rasag, Genesis 1 2, and the earth was deeply submerged in the darkness, and Allah's wind would blow on the surface. So, 
a lot of you know we always see muslims say well you they go to the arabic bible and it says the word allah so i will challenge any muslim to go to exodus 314 and see if the name allah was revealed to moses with that if you're able to read arabic um I they'll leave is it arabic? sorry did you say exodus 314 yeah in the yeah. arabic and whether allah was yeah. the name Moses when uh, Moses spoke to God. So if we go to the next slide, JC. So we're just almost done. So again, just to reiterate uh, the story from the Tafsir al Tusari, uh, as Rob was saying, basically there was an attack on the Kaaba and there was a flight of birds and they, predict they proceeded to pelt them with the stones that infect their skin with smallpox. If we go to the next slide, and it just give a bit more detail about the attack on the Kaaba. So in 930, Abu Tahir Kamati led the Kamatians, most notorious attack on the Mecca, unable to gain entry to the city. Abu Tahir called upon the right of all Muslims to enter the city and gave his oath as he came in peace. Once inside the walls, the 700 horsemen of the Khamatian army massacred around 30,000 pilgrims on the first day of Hajj, taunting them with verses of the Quran as they did so, whilst al Kamati shouted, I am God and God is in me. Where is God? I am your great God. Where are the birds of God that protect the Kaaba? Where are the stones of fire? But clearly Allah had gone on holiday. So... The pill <laughs> Allah was Allah. taking a shower, brother. <laughs> exactly. M maybe he was washing his shin or maybe his, <laughs> his, his curly hair or his hen toes. <laughs> exactly. So it says the pilgrims prayed to Allah instead of defending themselves, hoping that Allah would intervene as he had promised to protect the Kaaba according to the Quran. They looted the Kaaba, destroyed the buildings, plundered houses, seized slaves, and threw the dead bodies of pilgrims into the well of Zamzan, Zamzam, whilst other dead bodies were left on the street to rot. Abu Tahir took the black stone and held it in his possession. He took... Did he go? I think people were... Um... Paperboy well, finished, people like we... Allah. What happened to Paperboy? Oh, we don't know. Jabril yeah. might have nipped in. Just to give him a quick update. Yeah. We, need think, to, think, we need to ask real, Allah. Yeah, I, we need to ask Allah think, actually to pray to bring him back, man. Mm, Allah needs yeah, to pray. I, yeah, I think Jabril <laughs> shook him a little bit, but let, 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 him, <laughs> let him bring him back. <laughs> let him bring him back. My <laughs> wife. Uh, it wasn't the Ajua dates that were missing <laughs> from your diet. Yeah. Okay. Oh so, yeah, if you go to the next slide. So again, we asked, where was Allah's protection? Uh, so Abu Tahir Janabi ridiculed the belief in Muhammad and Islam, saying, in this world, three individuals have corrupted mankind, a shepherd, a physician, and a camel driver. And the camel driver was the worst pickpocket and the worst prestigator of the three. So he rejected the attempts of the Abbasids and the Fatimids to return the Black Stone, which the Khamatians held for 21 years, the Abbasids even tried to pay a ransom for its return to no avail. It was only due to the orders of the Fatimid Shia Caliph al-Mansur, whose authority they accepted, that the Khamatians returned their black stone by throwing it into the great mosque in Kufa, which broke it into seven pieces. So if Allah was telling the truth about the Kaaba's protection, shouldn't this story have been avoided? Because clearly... Those birds had disappeared. Where were they? The person directly challenged Allah, and Allah was nowhere to be seen. So clearly, Allah is a fabrication because, according to the Quran, there should have been some uh, stealth birds, you know, those F F 16 bombers launching yeah. their hands onto the heads of the Karmatians. Uh, so if we go to the next slide. Almost... Light. <clears throat> Let's go. Points um, to conceal. Yeah. So 
The points to consider is in the Battle of the Elephant, how come there has not been any archaeological findings of Ethiopian of the Ethiopian army's presence, such as elephant bones being found in Mecca if the birds killed them? Are there any Ethiopian records of this battle? Because it seems like it's only in Islamic history. Are there any Jewish or Christian attestations to the sacred black stone in Arabia that was linked to Abraham? Because Muslims seem to think that Abraham built... Uh, so why is it no Christians or Jew were aware of this for several thousands of years? We ask ourselves, is it a coincidence that Muslims venerate a black stone when the pre-Islamic Arabians were called stone worshippers by multiple sources a practice still carried on today and forbidden in Judaism and Christianity. So we must logically ask ourselves, how would the Arab pagans know what is the criteria for determining a true prophet? According to Islamic sources, Khadija was able to verify an angel by removing part of her clothing, but according to which Christian or Jewish tradition, as there is no Christian or Jewish tradition that confirms such a methodology. So if we go to our concluding slide. <clears throat> cool. So looking at the PBCAT test, which we start off with, things Mohammed failed on numerous occasions. So ask yourself objectively, does the evidence seem consistent with the behavior of someone who was getting divine revelation? Or do his actions strike you as being consistent with the behavior you would expect from someone who was an imposter? So of all the fantastical stories that are not in the Bible, how many have outside attestation or have archaeological evidence to support it? Uh, then we ask ourselves, do, does Muhammad provide detailed revelations as we would expect from someone recounting a true event. Why did we go from having a Bible with details of names, places, and timelines to a Quran with zero details? Why is Saudi Arabia, for example, devoid of any pre-Islamic archeological historicity? So we know one of the telling, one of the telling signs of a false prophet is someone who comes with self-serving revelations and we see this numerous times in the Bible, prophets being punished because they did something against God's will. God's will, yeah. Not that they did something and then God says, why do you conceal what is permissible? The fact is that Muhammad tried to conceal things because he knew it was wrong in his conscience and used his get out of jail card, get out of jail card, which was Allah. So the problems with Muslims is because they are so focused on the Trinity, they overlook the traits of what makes someone an actual prophet. So with Muhammad, unlike the rest of the prophets, Allah gave him privileges beyond his peers, a concept which has been preached against for hundreds of years before Muhammad. So if we go to the next slide, just a few extra points. We must ask ourselves, why is it the Bible and true historical events both have in common high verifiable historical claims. But the Quran and fables both have low verifiable claims. Some of the unsolved mysteries regarding the Quran for one to ponder are, where is the giant wall where the people of Gog and Magog are? Because there's a story where Dulkarnain built a giant wall, iron wall between two mountains and there were people these people of Gog and Magog stuck behind them. Yeah, and paper boy. Uh, by the way, sorry if, that I'm interrupting about the Gog and Magog. I watched uh, uh, Yasser Qadi. Uh, you know Yasser Qadi, right? Yeah. He mentioned he mentioned in his video about the Gog and Magog. Do you do you know that he and his followers actually believe that Gog and Magog are zombies? I kid you not. They are really? zombies. Yeah, they are zombies. Uh, uh, you know, caught behind a huge. Whoa, zombies. Can you imagine zombies? Anyway. Well, that's it. And the Islamic literature says for every Muslim, there's 999 people of the people of Gog and Magog. So if there's 1.6 million Muslims now, that means there must be almost 1 trillion people somewhere on this planet 
stuck on a stuck behind an iron wall. So can we imagine there's uh, almost 8 billion people in this world that we've counted, but according to the Quran, there's a further 1 trillion people that we have not yet located, which would probably take the size of America to house all these people. But yet, you know, Muslims seem to believe in these fables. So again, we ask, for example, who saw the moon split? Who are the people that live by the black muddy pool where the sun sets? Why are there no pre-Islamic Arabic texts that confirm the Quran, Quranic version of the fables that Jews and Christians reject as historical? Abraham built the Kaaba. Kaaba. How come no pagan Arab in that region had any biblical names, mainly Abraham, Ishmael or Hagar, as religious people usually name their children after well-known prophets or culturally significant people? And we must ask ourselves, if the Hajj was such a big event, how come no local region ever mentioned it in the historical text, even non-biblical historical evidence supports, supports various evidence events in the Old Testament? Yeah, so... Um, also, also <coughs> how come no one there. noticed Abraham uh, nipping out? Well, and recorded it. Cool. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good question. Um, I think maybe we're gone. It's gone. It's frozen for a, for a second. But I'm gonna allow Simon. Come on, Simon. Bless you, bro. Good to see you in the live chat. Uh, how are you? How so, are you, Simon? Um, yeah, good. Good stream, by the way, to have people to the chance to interact with you. So I'm gonna present the source that I think is relevant. So in the chats, you will see it like one, two, three. So at least three. Um, three sources or three uh, links. Um, do you mind sharing? Um, yeah, by all means. By all, yeah, okay, let me let me click on. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so I tell you what, uh, uh, Simon, can you please put it on the live, on the, sorry, on the chat. In the back chat. Yeah, on the back chat, so, so I can copy and paste it, I think. Well, you can share my screen. Able to put it um, on the screen. You can share my screen. Right. I mean, you. Uh, is that possible? Do you see the chat, Simon, at the back? Not the live. Apologies. Yeah. Apologies for for this. Oop, what's going on? Um, just Tabari. Let me get everybody else on board. Sure. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Okay, this is Tabari, Volume Nine. Um, so Tabari is like one of the greatest tafsir or like historical writers of Islam. So I posted the chat. Uh, you can get the link here, and just so you know that like um, I or uh, someone else is not making stuff up. You go to page sixty-nine, and there you have Tabari writing the following. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Yeah, let me just get everything going. Yeah, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. So this this is Tabari summing up what Muhammad basically saying that we are the helpers of God and advisors and his messenger is Muhammad and we fight the people until they believe in God. Can we just stop there? Yeah. We fight There's them a story that confirms that. Right. We fight them until they agree with us. Is that very like ISIS? Until they believe in Allah. So when when they believe in God, they always believe in, believe in Allah. So that's right. So that's right. we are fighting to essentially what until, I want to say from this that you have you fight until you convert people to Islam, basically. That's right. Yeah, it's the jizya verse. It's fight those who believe not in Allah, and then it goes on to say fight that's until right. there are no more unbelievers. But it doesn't stop there. It, ju it just continues that, um, and he who believes in God. His messenger has protected his life, meaning that if you're a Muslim, that you have a special privilege, I guess, because privilege. you agree with Islam. But it continues that his life and his possessions are free from us, and those who disbelieve will fight him forever. Can you guys explain what forever means? All time. Right. All time, continuously. Right in the cause of God and killing him as a small matter for us. 
So one more time for those who missed it, it's found in Habari, volume nine, page sixty-nine. Here it is. One more time. Um, can I share one more uh, source? Please. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Yeah. Okay. Here's one more source. Uh, here you have the Sira. Uh, it's just another name for biography of Muhammad. Um, Simon, my friend, can I add to what you said before please you continue? Do. Is that okay? Yeah, please do. Yeah, okay. If we go to uh, to the hadith, Muhammad says the following. أَمُرْتُ أَنْ أَقَاتِلَ النَّاسِ حَتَّى يُشْهَدُوا إِنَّ لَا أَلَهْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنِّي رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَيَقُومُ الصَّلَاةُ وَيَأْتُ الْجُزِيَةُ Did you hear it? So Muhammad said, the Messenger of Allah said, I've been commanded to fight to people until they testify to لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ Right? And I and that I am the messenger of Allah and establish regular prayers and pay zakat. So, uh, sorry, the word the last word was, wasn't uh, jizya; it was zakat. Sorry. So every Muslim, so every person on earth must become a Muslim. He must convert to Islam, else your blood, your wealth, and your women are not protected from Muhammad and his army of thugs. There you have but Allah says, but Allah says that he will make Christians superior until the day of resurrection. So unless the last Christian is to die on judgment day, like which kind of negates that until there are none left. He Sister, tells it's but, abrogated. Oh, <laughs> listen, Allah's perfect. His words can't be bested apart from when he tells Muhammad, don't worry, son, if you forget any ayah, of this clear and concise book that I'm giving you, I'll bring you a 2.0. I'll bring you a better one from some random in the street. But, you know, the real so, last of it. So, Sorry, Simon. There's a lot of comedy going on right near, uh, here, and it's it's just summing up the, the the lunacies of Islam. So, yeah, imagine if you actually take Muhammad seriously. You believe that Allah is the God of, of the world, and you th think that Muhammad, um, who is the, 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 the last messenger, um, here I have the, the, the biography of Muhammad. If you go to page number 602, so I'll post the link if you guys want it in the chat. Uh, okay, here's in the chat. Here. Can we read this together? It's yeah. poetry written by Muhammad's companions. Um, who devote their lives to the Prophet on the day of hand-to-hand -hand fighting and cavalry attacks? They purify themselves with the blood of the infidels and could consider um, that an act of piety. Can you purify himself with the blood of infidels? Wow. Uh -huh. So you kill infidels? So you kill yeah. infidels to end your rewards because you're acting... Justly, yeah. basically, and they and dare, fight. and they dare to say, "Why did the father, you know, did that to the son? son? Yeah, why mm -hmm. did he send his son to to die? Right? But here we see that the Muslims want to purify themselves, shower themselves with the blood of infidels. Wow, exactly. Yeah. So, a right. um, summary of this would be that that we are seeing uh, like a tsunami of ex-Muslims that are running out from this cult. And that is very encouraging. Yeah. And and the enemy of Islam is information, I would say. Um, anybody want to comment on that? I think that's brilliant. I, I really do get completely edified when I hear, even if they don't want to go public, even if they don't want to tell their family necessarily, because we know that there are threats of violence and all of those things attached. I think that those who God calls will be drawn, like they will come to him and... Um, yeah, it's inevitable that they will ex they will come to accept Christ, and I think that's a glorious and wonderful thing. And I think that because we don't know who God calls, we need to keep preaching the word to Muslims with love. And I say respect for the person, not for the the sometimes disgusting things that we have to look into in order to disprove a fact that's so easily disprovable that, that Muhammad was the best example for mankind. It only takes one time of him being less than the best to disprove the whole the whole pre like concept. So, yeah, I find it uh, very satisfying that Muslims are seeing the truth. Even if they become atheists, it's one step on the road to, you know, that's to their eventual point. salvation. 
Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sis. No worries. Cool. Hey, boy. What should we do? Yeah, so I think there's just a handful of slides left. Uh, it will be a good continuation from what um, Takiya Watch was presenting in terms of the ethics of Mohammed. So if we go to uh, the next slide. Ah, uh, hey, buddy. Cool. So <clears throat> now we, we've kind of, kind of concluded our look at uh, analysis of Mohammed's behavior. So we kind of now look towards the scripture. So, you know, for many Muslims, it's a case of say one, not three. But for Muslim, that's all that matters. But the problem is they don't look beyond that and look at the qualities of Muhammad as a prophet, what makes him a prophet. Because we know the Bible is a true guidance. And when it came to prophets 600 years before Muhammad, it would say, in the book of Peter, it says, these false teachers are like springs that have no water. They are like clouds that are blown by a storm. A place in the deepest darkness has been kept for them. They boast with words that mean nothing. They lead people into the trap of sin. They find people who have just escaped from a wrong way of life and lead them back into sin. They do this by using evil things people want to do in their human weakness. These false teachers promise those people freedom, but they themselves are not free. They are slaves to a mind that has been ruined by sin. Yes, people are slaves to anything that controls them. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, Jews and Christians re rejected Muhammad and the pagans followed him because they had no criteria and he appealed to their carnal mind. So if you go to the next slide, because we'll just look at the differences between the teaching of Christ and that of Muhammad. Cool. So, for example, Jesus says, then he called to the crowd, to him with his disciples, and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me, for the gospel, will have it. Now, if we go to the next slide, we go to Matawa to Malik. But then Muhammad comes with a different message. He says, Yahya related to me from Malik, from Abu Huraira, that the messenger of Allah said, Allah guarantees either the garden or a safe return to his home with whatever he has obtained of a reward or, or booty. For the one who does jihad in his way, if it is solely jihad and trust in his promise, that brings him out of his house. So we see two, two contrasting messages. One, Christ is saying to be his follower, you must be prepared to give up everything. You know, whereas Muhammad, he sounds like a car boot salesman. You know, follow me, you will either get the garden or you will get the reward of booty from jihad. Where Which one would be tougher to follow? Christ who says you must be prepared to give up everything or Muhammad who's saying if you follow him, there's rewards in it. So if we go to the next slide, because Muslims like to say uh, Jesus was just like Muhammad, but we saw that Jesus taught against appealing to one of the biggest human weaknesses, which is sexual desire, whereas Muhammad appealed to and taught to indulge in it. And this is why Christ said, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Now, if we go to the next slide. Muhammad, on the other hand, he said in the book of Tamidi, the believer shall be given in paradise such and such strength in intercourse. It was said, O messenger <laughs> of Allah, and he will be able to do that. He said he will be given the strength of a hundred. So Muslims, if you say you believe in Jesus, why did Jesus not say Heaven was like the Playboy Mansion, where you will have endless intercourse and the strength and a of mile heart. high erect penis. Just chucking <laughs> it out there, an endless penis and the houris, whose legs you can see through and you can see the bones. <laughs> don't forget the thousands yeah. of young boys like pearls who don't bleed. 
Exactly. So when Muslim when Muslims say you know, Jesus and Muhammad came with the same message, just give those the, the, they give them those two two verses. Totally contradictory. Jesus says they'll be marrying where Muhammad says it's the Playboy Mansion. So <laughs> we go to the next slide. Oh gosh. Mm. consider. Yeah. yeah, so again, the Bible, before Muhammad came, teaches us to distinguish between true and false prophets. Because in the book of Timothy, it says, For a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And this is why the scripture cannot be corrupted, because... Otherwise, there will be no criteria for determining who is the truth or, for, or false prophet. And we see here, it says, the te they will get teachers who suit them, their own desires. But we see in the hadith where the, where the companions had gone to war and they were saying to Muhammad, we feel, should we castrate ourselves because their wives were still at home? And then we got the verse of Muta. Temporary, where, temporary marriage where you can even give a woman your garment for some, you know, quick time passion. Now compare that to what Christ was said, you know. He said one woman to one man, but Muhammad is coming with a message, you know, have as many sex slaves, what your right hand possesses, muta, all these sort of things. So how can we say these two people have the same ethic? And this is why we call Muslims to wake up and open their eyes. Who actually shows true discipleship, true discipline, you know. Perfection. It's an ethical behaviour, you know. It's quite clear they did not come with the same message. And it's very clear they were not in this, were, they did not uh, follow this same God because one is saying all these different things in contradiction to what Christ has said. Mm. But for they focus on three, say God is one, but they forget about all the other things that qualifies someone as a prophet. But paper so, boy, you, you forgot a very important ayah, my friend. Chapter 78, ayah 33. And the uh, big swelling breasts for every hori that you'll get, she will have me melon-sized breasts, brother, not second. Very important, man. Oh, Don't forget God. that, man. Those exactly. poor horries are going to be looked over because they're only an eight Oh, so, what are we talking? D and above? Like, I mean, double G. Exactly. 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 If you set in Arabic, I mean, you've won, clearly, already. I mean, it must be true. Exactly. And if we just go to the final slide, uh, this was a quick syllogism which, I, which was put together. Okay. Next slide. Mm. So basically a syllogism is a type of logical reasoning where the conclusion is gotten from two linked premises. For example, an apple is a fruit, all fruit is good, therefore an apple apples are good. So then, you know, people can download this. We'll put up the link later on um, and they can have a look at it. So basically it determines how, why the Bible cannot be corrupted. Because if we look, if the Bible gets corrupted, then there is no criteria for determining who is a true or false prophet, for example. So then if, because Muslims claim the Bible is corrupted. So if the Bible was corrupted before the time of Muhammad, that means they have no way of determining what qualifies someone as a true or false prophet. So therefore the Bible has to not be corrupted. And if the Bible is not corrupted, it still proves Muhammad is a false prophet. So I'd advise people, we'll put, that, put up the link, have a look at that. And when you, you know, speak to Muslims, just use that logical reasoning to them. Um, and on that note, that was the last slide of the presentation. So I hope everyone's learned a lot. Boom, um, as they say. Everyone for who jumped on the panel. Uh, I don't know if there's any other people who have questions or want to kind of jump in with their thoughts and yeah, maybe uh, there are muslims who can call us liars and jump in to refute us 
Well, this is it. Four days, and we only had one Muslim. Yes. But when we see uh, the only one, yes, the Muslims put on challenges. Christians are calling in left, right, and centre. But it shows you that Muslims cannot defend their religion. You know, they can comment in the comments, but they they're not brave enough to step up to the plate and defend their religion. So we invite I all think... Muslims to reconsider and leave this false religion and come to the true God of Abraham, yeah. Isaac, and Jacob. You know, you know Paperboy, um, we mentioned uh, the, the earlier ayah, chapter 33, ayah 50, where Muhammad, yeah. one of his uh, privileges is if Muhammad lays his eyes on a married woman, a Muslim married woman, uh, her husband must immediately divorce her and give her to Muhammad so Muhammad can do nikah to her. Mm. I once asked when I used to debate uh, on Paul talk in the back in the old days where Christian Prince used to debate Sam Shimon, etc., etc. I once debated a Muslim and I asked him this very question. If Muhammad would have been alive today and he would look upon your married woman, your, your own wife, would you divorce her and give her to Muhammad? You know what he said? Guess what he said? Of course. That's what he said. Yes. Had they been married a while though? So there you go. <laughs> I mean, Muhammad, Muhammad is special, man. Muhammad is special. It's a very special man, Muhammad. And is his privilege and all his desires to be by 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um I don't see Muslims that would like to jump on jump on the live chat. I can see Lee once again just making okay what's, what he's saying right now. So he's saying the following uh soccer films like the genitals <laughs> like donkeys the gentiles like donkeys and similar like horses is better and songs of Solomon and wishing he was her brother incest, so and speaking about her flowers. Whoa. Okay, so I think he wants to um he prefers to talk about that rather than talking about a 53-year-old man sleeping with an eight-year-old child, stealing other people's wives, uh running around uh condoning uh the murder of a, a Jew by strangulation. He said no blood money was required. He'd prefer to talk about uh, maybe Allah coming in a shape that they will recognize because they've seen him before with the hen toes and the curly hair. He'd rather talk about donkey genitals, which says something about his mental health, rather than reading the text in its entirety in Song of Solomon's and Kings and to look at the context of what is being said, to whom it is being said and what it actually means. So I would pray for that person, Dale, like I really would pray that God would move his heart to stop attacking Christianity, which Allah revealed anyway. Allah created Christianity by causing this big deception on the cross. Allah revealed the Torah and the Injil and the Psalms. And if you're going to say they were corrupted, how come Allah can't just protect his own word? Why does the Quran say it's a miracle? And yet it also says Muhammad will bring nothing other than a warning. Uh, he will, won't bring any miracles. Allah tells him to tell the people, if you want miracles, you better check in the Bible because I've done that. Um, that's old hat to me. I'm just coming to you with warnings. Now. So, Dale, with respect, either grow up a little bit or go and read some, like, porn if you're just looking for genitals. I don't know. Rob, would you like to make uh, any comments on over. this? Sorry. <laughs> well, it was, was also funny, uh, this case, that I remember back in the day when... Um, uh, Ahmed, the late Ahmed Didat was also yeah. making these type of comments to Songs mm. of Solomon. And mm. then when they realized that Mohammed was actually found in Songs of, or Songs of Solomon, they, he well, completely they changed it. his mind about pornography. Mm. So, it's Songs amazing. Is, it's amazing Sahih. for me. JC, when we defend Christ, we mm. defend the truth with a capital T. There's no need for tequila. There's no need for embarrassment. We just need to read the text. Often it's just a couple of sentences before or after whatever the Muslim, like, you know, logical fallacy is that's coming at the Bible. What, whereas Muslims are required to lie in order to protect Islam. Why do you need to lie to defend the truth? It doesn't make any sense because then you negate the truth by having to lie for it. If you can't stand proud upon your prophet, a mere warner, uh, a false prophet, potentially, if you look at Luke 16, then 
how do you stand to the embarrassment of it? If I was a passionate Muslim, I know that I would defend it with all like, you know, like if I felt the same way for Islam as I feel for Christ, I would defend it up right up until the last moment. But I would feel massive amounts of embarrassment and I would do my darndest to avoid the Quran, to stay out of the ayah and the hadith even and just attack the bible which my god allah has already told me he in part revealed so i have to attack allah in order to defend allah it doesn't make i'm sorry i'd like it if it made sense just so i could refute it rationally rather than like i don't get where this is coming from like i realize there's a spiritual stockholm syndrome you're identifying with a man who was less than perfect who allah himself says I will forgive you, Mohammed, for your past, present and future sins, indicating that he will sin again. How is the best example for mankind sinning on a daily? How is that possible when Christ is righteous and Isa is a pure child in Surah 19? And I'm going to stop ranting. Someone stop mm -hmm. me. Uh, and, and Kay, um, some, uh, I think GC asked me to add uh, also my uh, point of view. Uh, yeah. I think today was a really a blessing of a show and it was an honor to be with you guys again. Thank you for having us. Uh, may, you, God, may, may God bless the audience, bless our body in Christ, body of Christ. Um, I want to add something to what GC said. You know, Ahmed Idad, he mentioned a uh, song of, of songs, right? Song of Solomon 516. Solomon. Yeah. So when Ahmed Idad mentioned uh, that Muhammad, he said that Muhammad, Mahmadim is, uh, you know, that's Muhammad. Here, Ahmed Idad actually called Muhammad and Allah liars because we mentioned that earlier, chapter 7, ayah 157 states that if Muslims, you know, if you want to find Muhammad, you have to go to the gospel and the Torah. Now, is the song of Solomon inside the Torah? Is it inside the Injil? No, it's not part of it, right? Mm -hmm. So here, Ahmad Idad actually called Allah and Muhammad, uh, and Muhammad liars and deceivers. When you go to other sources, then, then the Torah and the Injil. So actually, this proves that Ahmadi Dad was nothing but a deceiver and a liar. On top of that, the word Mahmadim is mentioned in many places in uh, the Bible. If we go, for example, to Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, 66, and also in Ezekiel, the same word Mahmadim is mentioned. In Isaiah, it's talking about that uh, uh, if, if we're going to say that that's Muhammad, then Muhammad will be destroyed. If we go by the word Mahmadim, and if we go to Ezekiel, then uh, and we see the, the word Mahmadim, that means Ezekiel's wife. And you, if you say that's Muhammad, then Ezekiel uh, must be in love with Muhammad. So do you see? Because the word sounds like Muhammad, Mahmadim, it must it must be Muhammad. By that logic, uh, the word Akbar uh, is a, a cursed mouse. So if you're going to say to go by that, that means Allah Akbar, Allah is a, the accursed mouse. Well done, Ahmed Idad. Well done. <laughs> oh, you okay, got we, people being you killed. Heard you got cursed mice. I mean, what's going on? Why aren't the RSPCA involved? I don't know what's happening. Well, let's let's not forget the the monkeys getting stoned for committing adultery as well. Or um, the Jews being turned into monkeys and pigs. I mean, that was a good one. <laughs> Excellent family. I mean, um, cool. I think we covered two hours and 20 minutes of, of uh, this presentation. Um, people, what we like to, well, we want to give a, a wrap up on your presentation. Um, I, I, I just basically, yeah, like, give a, give a conclusion as to what you like to watch, what you were looking to achieve by presenting this to, to, to everybody. Uh, well, the main crux of this is Islam is false. Jesus is Lord and you know we just wanted to take an approach that people use their critical thinking to look at what the Quran says if it's a book of history it should have historical claims things that we can certify because we know fabricators cannot fabricate history that's why when you look at things like archaeology you know, things that have happened in the past, they, they're always going to be there. And that's why when, like, for example, historians look at the Bible and try to research things and claims about people, cities and whatnot, they always find things. But then with uh, Islam, we find nothing. And that's what we would expect if something was made up, you know, 
if I read Harry Potter's book, I'm not going to mm. find the place named in Harry Potter's book because it's invented. And mm. this is why we have questions like, where are the people of Gog and Magog? Muslims are scratching their heads. Well, the Quran is true, but apparently there's one trillion people somewhere hidden on the earth. It's not logical. We Maybe they're on a no lockdown. Sorry. Well, well, exactly. You know, there's so many historical claims that the Quran makes, and all we can find is fables that they are linked to. So, you know, we live in an internet age where people have the ability to research things. You know, so watch over the presentations, have a look for yourself, and you'll come to the, the decision that Islam is false. You know, don't think, oh, the Quran is true, therefore we can't find things. And, you know, it's it, it's not logical. You know, if you make historical claims, you should be able to have archaeological evidence. And as I started this presentation, I said, the Quran claimed there was 124,000 prophets sent around the world, but yet we cannot find one book of these people. It seems highly odd. So, you know, some people be in their way, but those sincere people who are taking in this information will kind of, it will lead you to the truth that Islam is false. Thank you, Dave. Thank you uh, for that, people. Um, CSK, any, any final words? And then we go to Rob. Yeah, I was I was about to pass the mic to to the Sheikh, but uh, it would appear that he's he's offline. But yeah, yeah it's a bad connection final, yeah, final commentary, Kay, and then Rob yeah, Bob, and then I, I will I will. I'd like that. to like sincerely thank Paperboy for all of the time that he put into this. I know he's been like fitting it in with his work and his other schedule commitments and stuff. So thank you very much, JC. You need an actual medal. I'm going to find you one. But all of the stuff you do behind the scenes, all of the times that you're there with like answers to questions and supporting uh, Christians around and about. Um, Rob as well, obviously you're a blessing uh, with the Arabic. Um, so I guess I'd just like to say to any Muslims who listen to this in the future or are listening now, without the bravado, without the uh, like the community element of Islam, in the privacy of your own room, like, if you're so sure of yourself, just do this one thing with a repentant heart. Ask God to show you the truth. You don't need to fear the truth. The truth is the truth, and it can't be changed by Takiyah or by Christians talking you into it. No Christian will be able to talk you into it, but the Holy Spirit will be able to come to you if you see the truth of Christ. And if you do, I promise you will not regret it. You you can't regret this the feeling that you have when the Holy Spirit is in you because it is just, I don't know that I could explain it to someone who doesn't know about it, but I, I can promise that I've had times in my life when I haven't had it and it is infinitely better than having to scramble around trying to defend a guy who by today's standards, Adnan Rashid admits, is a paedophile. So um, God bless you Muslims, but repent. Turn from your Thank sins you. before it's too late because you don't know how long you've got. Nobody does. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Iske. Um, Cool. Um, I don't know if Sheikh, if you believe in the queue. Uh, Sheikh, would you like to say some final words before we leave? And then I'll pass the mic to Rob, and then I'll give my goodbyes to everybody. Sheikh, any final words on this presentation, this series? Yeah, thank you. Uh, God bless you all. I'll be quick about it. I was in the chat. Uh, on the chat and I was reading someone saying uh, about Salat that uh, brother Rob Christian is wrong about it and I was told to come and teach him his own language well I tell them that uh, brother Rob is an Arab himself and he don't need any help with his Arabic but I'm gonna go uh, answer that uh, person uh, Salat comes from uh, the word, uh, the root word, sila. Sila means connection. Okay. Now the argument of the Muslims are is that blessing is a connection to. So therefore, salat is a blessing. I tell them, sila is connection. Mausul is connected. Mutawasil means non-stop. Tawasul means connecting. Ausal means either common points 
or joints of the body. So if that all coming from the same word, connection, can I be the joint or the knee of God when I pray? Or can I be uh, non-stop when I pray? It doesn't mean that. Salat is a, is a special word dedicated only to the divine when you connect to the, to the divine, which is God. That's about Salat. And uh, Brother Rob was 100% uh, right about what he said. Uh, one more quick thing. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd like uh, that person to use the word Isa instead of uh, Jesus in his nickname because uh, Jesus is Yasur in Arabic and Isa must have another translation in English, something like Isa or anything. Thank you for thank that. You. Thank you for that, Brother Sheikh. Thank you for that, Brother Shakespeare. Uh, thank you for those words. Rob, any final yeah. comments on this series, please? Well, the Brother Shakespeare, thank you for uh, confirming that we are actually not lying. Uh, because if we are lying, that means we are nothing but hypocrites. Uh, uh, how can we claim to be, uh, you know, uh, seekers of truth or followers of the truth? And who is the truth? Jesus himself, when he said, I am the way, the truth and life. So, uh, and, you know, and, and let's say, you know, we are humans. Me, everyone, he can make mistakes. In the end, we are all hypocrites. We are all sinners. We can make mistakes. But... When we, when we lie, please Muslims, we are here, we're not hiding, come and correct us, refute us. We are alive on air, why are you not stepping up? Where is Mimi Hijab, where is Ali Dawa, where are the, these people, right? We have been, uh, you, you guys, you, you are running an amazing live show for at least two hours. Where are the Muslim heroes, all right? So again, guys, thank you so much for this. Uh, God bless your ministry, God bless you and your loved ones. God bless the audience. Keep supporting us, guys. Keep us in your prayers. Keep the admins in your prayers. And um, yeah, as long God can give us uh, guidance and uh, health, we will continue doing what we do. And uh, thank you for your amazing support, guys. Uh, blessings. Jesus is Lord, and Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Amen. Boom. Thank you for that. Thank you for um, that, uh, Rob Bob. Yeah, big boy. Can we just something? go to slide 70? Uh, I just see slide the comment. Islam is the truth. Slide 70. Well, it's not it's, that. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me get a comment first so we can give some context to this slide. So it, Islam is the truth, you said, right? Uh, yeah, 1223. It... Guys, the Quran is the word of God, not word of Muhammad. Peace be upon him. If you don't believe me, it's your choice. But remember, you will stand in front of Almighty Allah on the day of judgment. What's your excuse? So let's just quickly go okay. to... My excuse is I've wandered into the wrong room if Allah's there on Judgment Day. That's my excuse. All right, cool. So what slide? Uh, uh, 70. Slide 70, cool. Let's go to slide number 70. Uh, okay. Copy and paste. So, okay. In answer to Islam is the truth, we see the hadith. My Lord agreed with me in three things. Once the wives of the Prophet made a united front against the Prophet, and I said to them, it may be if he... The prophet divorced you all that the lord allah will give him instead of you wives better than you so this verse the same as i had said was revealed so islam is the truth according to umar the quran also contains the words of umar so how do you rectify that it's not just the words of allah it's the words of umar and if we just go to the next slide uh, next one here we see Abdul Ibn Sah, who says, uh, who used to write the revelation for the prophet on God. He later apostatized and joined the pagans. The reason given by the commentators is when the verse 23, 12 was revealed, the prophet called him and dictated it to him. And when the prophet reached the end of 23, 14, thereafter we produce him as another creature. Abdullah said in amazement, so blessed be the God, the best of creators. The prophet said, and thus it was revealed to me, which made Abdullah doubt and say, if Muhammad is truthful, then I received the revelation. And if he lied, say of the like of his speech. So he apostatized. So clearly Islam is the truth. You do not know what you're talking about. 
because the Quran contains the words of Umar, Abdullah ibn Sa'ar, and everyone else Muhammad copied off. And this Paper, is in your Islamic yeah. literature. Paper boy, can I add to, the, to this very important story about Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh? Yeah. Uh, I, I rewatched the part where you were discussing this very important topic with uh, that Muhammad. Actually, the guy, I actually, I rewatched the video and everything he said was nothing but deception and lies, especially on this one. You know, maybe if you remember what he said and you can, you yourself, you can replay that video of yesterday. You will see that he said and he lied. He said that Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh, when he was a scribe of Muhammad, he was not a Muslim at that very moment. He lied. Yeah. Ibn Abi Sarh was a Muslim when he was being a scribe, when he said, Tabarak Allah ahsan al khalaqeen. And Muhammad said, yes, write it down, write it down, because that's the way how Jibril gave it to me. So he lied, even he lied about Abdullah ibn Abi Sarh when he was a Muslim when he was writing the ayah down for Muhammad. You see how these Muslims are liars and deceived? Shame, shame mm. on them. Shame on them. <clears throat> Why? Uh, cool. But we know, we know Muslim apologists have no shame no honor and dignity if, you, if they are defending Muhammad, who claims to be a prophet and a, a pedophile at the same time. Thank well, you. Thank you for that, uh, Rob. And yeah, uh, obviously we would, we would love to have the Muslim son uh, come and, and review this point. So just find the words. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you all for, for joining the live chat. Thank yeah, you, family. In the live, in the yeah, I'd like to thank Rob that, as well. Arabic came in very useful and Very handy. handy. Oh, always um, big yeah. up, big up, big up, bro. Uh, thank you. Bro. I remember to subscribe okay. to Christian uh, K Soko film, show them the support, um, and let's support the family. Mm. Let's support Thanks, the family. Let's grow the, yeah. let's, let's grow the family and to Muslims and non, non Christians. I mean, you know, um, from this series, what we're trying to show you guys. It's quite. It's very clear. It's, 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 it's to show you that Muhammad, peace be upon him, cannot be in line with the biblical prophets, you know. And I hope the evidence that was provided today will influence you into do more research about your traditions. Of course, read the Bible as well. And I really do hope that the Holy Spirit can guide you and open your eyes, your heart, to see that the best example to follow is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And um, I do hope that uh, you realize that to to, um, to the sincere Muslims that are watching, uh, that be watching this series for, for these past few days. Uh, so with that in mind, thank you everyone. Thank you admins. Thank you everyone for joining the live chat. Thank you to all the super chats. Uh, I do apologize if I didn't um, post your questions on screen. Um, um, maybe next time. And yep. Hopefully, I'll see you on the next live stream, family. So, thank you all. Take care of yourselves and your Peace family. Christ Stay safe. You. Peace and blessings of our risen Lord be with each and every one of you. God bless amen. you. Amen. Amen. God bless. Take amen. care. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.